This is Jonah Hill, and you're listening to the only podcast that matters. Pro gang, I don't say this every Jump week, but we are joined by the king of cookies, the sultan of socks, little Januzzi vertical, the Don Dada of the dough, the oligarch of the oven, the chocolate chip chief, the pharaoh of footwear, the count of kettlebells, the superman of squats, the if you know, you know of Soho, the baron of bakers, co-founder of Januzzi's Cookies and author of the book, How to Wear Socks, out now, John Januzzi. John. What up, buddy? Hey. Wait, John, can I ask you? Can I ask you a question real real quick right off the bat? Let's get right into it. Uh, l- so little right? Januzzi Vertical, that's the best. Na- Can you name one Little Uzi Vert song right now? Name one. Do we have to start this one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, why, why do you feel? <laughs> but John, 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 I'm going to build, I'm going to tear you down, but now I'm going to build you back up. I am so excited to have you here because as a published author, I normally do this podcast alone out on an island as yeah, the only published both, author. And you now you, both John. Done, uh, you guys have both done photo books. I John, think. you, yeah. a published author, are joining me. And right. this is fantastic. I don't normally get to bounce it around with a fellow big-brained intellectual. This is going to be really fun. No. Thank you very much. I know. And it's honestly, it's great to be, like, when people talk about coastal elites, now I know that it's me. Have you been like, have about. you, have people been like, have other published authors been hitting up on DM? Like, okay, I, I'm going to let you follow my like uh, private Finsta now or anything. <laughs> yeah. Like me and like all the, all, all the book writers and me were like very tight now, especially the ones that wrote like really like important pieces of literature. Like they saw this, how to wear socks thing. And they were just like, no, he changed the name. I'd like hey to man. say that. Hey man, I put, John, my so- I put my socks on like any other published author, one foot at a time. Except John yeah. called them book writers, not authors. This is an author who called them book writers. He's new that here. Was, He's that new was here. a nice touch. You only know that if you've written a book. Obviously. He's new here. Um, right. John. <laughs> the book writers group. John, thank you for taking a minute out of your slow descent into madness, uh, which mm. we're all uh, enjoying watching on your IG story, um, for t- coming on to the only pod that matters for... The first time, but kind of not. You've been with us before on a previous podcast that shall, that shall not be mentioned, and we've been wanting you to come back on. The timing had to be right. We knew you had a big thing in the works. Now that the book is out, in stores now, How to Wear Socks, uh, thanks for coming on the only podcast that matters. Um, and I, I take it that we're going to have to delicately dance around a few issues. Is that right? Do you want to talk about the things that we can't talk about? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's the deli- it's the delicate dance of life, man. I mean, like you got to be graceful, like a gazelle, and we have to, you know, we have to look out for like the things that I got to look out for. You're a big <laughs> you're a big fan of dance. You make these I amazing do. you make a, these amazing uh, dance do, compilation mashups. Yeah, nothing says you've got cool shit to do like a <laughs> dance mashup. You know, <laughs> what's the next song going to be? Because I submitted. Um, that one song by MGMT, and I saw they didn't pick it, so I'm a little disappointed. Electric Feel? Electric no, Feel I think or Kids? kids? Uh, yeah. uh, what no, about doing Heroin yeah. with the Stars? Know. It's tough because, yes, obviously, an incredible song. And I saw your submission, and I was very, I was very pleased that you took part. But the problem, so with those dance videos, it's basically, the way you have to think of it is like, you're at a like imagine you're at the whitest wedding on earth okay? oh Lawrence's wedding I, yeah. that was, okay that was that was lovely. i knew where this was going not that's not cool john <laughs> no, listen i'm not even listen, listen all of the rap songs were censored okay <laughs> dude no we don't talk I've, about that i've enough. also never seen first of all <laughs> i know so the last time we spoke on a previous whatever um, podcast endeavor that, we, that shall not be named Yes, exactly. Podcast endeavor that should not be named. I don't know if we talked about the one singular dancer at your wedding that blew my fucking mind away completely. Your girlfriend, Alex. Alex. Your girlfriend? (laughs) Oh, my God. I think a lot of people talked about Alex because there were some wardrobe malfunctions that we had to take care of. Like, (laughs) Hey, occupational hazard, you know? I mean, occupational hazard for when you... Whatever, man. I'm not going to answer. I love Alex. (laughs) But I will say... Jacob fucking Gallagher. Yeah. Have you witnessed that man dance? He's uh, like, and he's light on his feet. Him and Rachel, real, they get into it. Yeah, Rachel he was doing like, 
uh, Gallagher and his wonderful, beautiful fiance Rachel were on the Zoom, right? Remember? What do you mean? Oh, in the in the yeah, audience. Yeah, Rachel room? was there when they had the big yeah, yeah. ass and scissors. He, and he brought he brought the big ass scissors. No, Jacob yeah. Gallagher. Wow, I totally forget this because um, on the previous podcast that shall not be named, we did the Texas Texas wedding recap with Januzzi. Um, yeah, and yeah, Jacob Gallagher was like a fucking Jacob Gallagher was like the fucking the the guy and the artist. You know, he was like yeah, swinging. Highly. He was like razzmatazzing. He was Lindy hopping. Like it was wild. Yeah. Alex and I had a legitimate conversation at the wedding where we we're like, he's just such a good dancer. You I mean, like, and you know what, rug, man, I'll give Dude, it to him. And par for the course for Gallagher, like always, always surprising you in like delightful ways. Sure. Delightful. Um, all right, Junuzi. Well, you oh. asked us before coming on if uh, the segments have changed all the answers. No, no because we're incredibly saying. lazy. So I'm going to throw it to Lawrence for the first segment, which... Yeah, the only segment I have the pleasure of getting to do, I don't know why that is. Um, no one really ever talks about that either, James. Uh, John, fit check. I don't know. We're, you're going to walk the audience through the totality of your outfit, and it's up to you whether a public author such as yourself would like to go a book top writer. down or the, bottom up. The term up. is yeah, book, book writer. writer. I'm a book. I'm a maker, I'm a maker of books. I wrote a the writer tone. of books. Writer of dead, books. dead Book Writers Society. What's the movie with Robert Williams? Yeah, dead Poets. Yeah. Yeah, dead, dead book writers. writers. Oh, trapping my trapping. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, fapping. Right, we're, 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 oh, we're fapping my fapping. Uh, oh, yeah, John, uh, tell us about your outfit. What do you want to do? You want to be a fucking police officer? Or you want to no, be- we're gonna go. We're gonna go bottom up. Thank you. Bottom is it bottom up or shoes up? I forget what you say. Nah, mm, definitely bottom not up. shoes up. Shoes yeah, up. Shoes up sounds. You gotta know about weird. the socks, dog. It's the whole. It's yeah. the whole. It's the totality, man. You know, use context. Right, so. All right, so I am I am not wearing shoes, and we've actually gone so far past post sneaker. I'm in, I'm in a post shoe existence, yeah, fucking sure. completely. So I've got just some Bomba socks. Can we see them? Real simple. Can we see the colorway? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so you like ankle, so like like no shoes. Nice ankle, ankle, nice socks. ankle sock. Ankle, that's what it is. Um. I I am wearing blue Umbro shorts. Hell yes! You're, are they vintage? They are purchased on eBay for probably from I don't know www dot eBay dot com. The, the Air yeah. Genuzzi signature ones, like those, yeah. those are the that's your yeah. signature thing. You own that. Yeah. That's yours. Do you know what I the NC, Do you know what the NC measurement is? And oh, yeah. how how thick is the fucking uh, the hole to the you know. Leg hole, I guess, is the technical term to accommodate your fucking quad massive, meat. massive tie ting. So they are. Yeah, you look, they you're are, looking meaty as hell, bro, these days. I've seen you on the gram, dog. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed that I just post photos of my legs every single fucking day. You, did. Um, you absolutely do. I miss that. It's certainly not a cry for attention. <laughs> um, are you doing it? But Al? What's that? Are you doing a handstand right now like, with like the laptop flip so it looks like <laughs> your right side up? <laughs> yeah. I am. The shoulders also, the are. The shoulders are. Januzzi looks like he's in the hotel in Inception. <laughs> handstand is a flattering angle if you can get it from the side. If you ever see it from the front, it's, it's we're not in pretty territory. But if you see it from the front, wait till you see it from the side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ass so fat, I can see it when he does a handstand. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, I mean, as a book writer, I can't really comment on that. But <laughs> I will say... In seam on these is probably a five. Okay. It's okay. Like about a five. And then they're fire. They're, they're, yeah. they're, and they're your thing. Like, I think that you talked about them on the previous podcast that should not be named. And that was like over a year ago. And yeah, like Lauren said, yeah. they're super juicy too. I don't, I don't think it's even a five. I think it's shorter, dog. I think these, all right. These does ones vary, are a little longer. Does it vary from model. It varies, right? Year to year, model to model, skew to skew. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's like, a five. I have. Yeah, these are oh, about a five. These good, are, dog. Fuck, I need some. Thanks, man. Do they have the hologram, yeah. like, checker print? Yeah. No. So I uh, have I have a a pair of those in black, and I went to put them on, like, a couple months ago, and they don't fit any longer. And it's tough, because when you're getting – when you're going with those, like, the, the vintage ones, because they don't make the checkered print in the short length anymore, which is what I like. The sizing is all over the map. Like I can be, I, I can be a small, medium, or large, and 
this, these ones that I wore basically all of last summer were small and they don't fit anymore. Like in the, I in put the them waist on, or in the thighs? Yeah. The quad? It, it, it's in, it's in the legs. So it's not like, you know, it's, I was pretty excited. Honestly. My man is on but, fucking, no, my man is, my man is on straight Saquon Barkley mode. Yo, size yeah. is the prize, swole is the goal. We talk about this. We are a fitness uh, enthusiast body posi podcast. Obviously, yeah. James and I are in incredible shape. Chuck and Sean are fucking exquisite fucking specimens. specimens. Come on. Really exquisite. Yeah, that's why John like is here. works of art. Bow down yeah, at the chiseled. temple of yeah, games. Chiseled by Michelangelo yeah, no... himself. <laughs> Bruce Weber asked Chuck to take his shirt off. Well, known fact. Yeah, and, and it was and it was definitely sexual harassment because he was touching himself. But it's still a compliment when you kind of think about it. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I take that back I, I, again as a book writer. I take I'm that not, back I'm not gonna go. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, chef, chef, leave that in. So moving on from the fucking bros, the umbies, umbies. Uh, so then I'm, I'm, trying wearing... to, I'm just trying to make slang here. Stop. Yeah, Umbies works. Dude, honestly, after after the previous podcast endeavor, many, many Umbro, uh, many of the Umbro people. There's dozens of us. <laughs> yeah, there, actual, there are several, I would say. We're not even at dozens, but I did get some kids who were just like, yeah, man, I got my fucking Umbros. It was dope. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Sick. moving on, moving on from the Umbies, this is, uh, <laughs> this is an Orly sweater from like, years ago your favorite of all time right favorite of all time absolute yeah i mean rest in peace like beautiful beautiful clothing were they new york Um, based yeah yeah right it was a brother and a sister a brother and a brother and then i think it was one of their wives why right freaky deaky yeah they rocked Um, they did new york fashion week they were killing it. And also, I feel like if they were, I don't know all the circumstances, but it feels very, it was like American luxury, but like not stuffy. I feel like it would have killed right now. So it's a super bummer. Yeah. Best really knits. The knits were obviously everything. Orly walks a pock and run. Eh, so what could not run? exactly. I don't know. Um, is, this a, is this like some wear and tear in the neck or is this like some decoration yeah. I can't really see? No, this is, this is wear and tear and... It's funny because, so I, I wear this sweater all the time and I actually, I used to wear it to work all the time and when I would walk to work, I, Orly, Matt would walk by me and I would always, it would always be this thing of like, oh man, it's like the sweater. But what about me? Yes, exactly. And he, I remember the last time I saw him when I was wearing this, he was like, oh, it's held up like really well. Cause this is, it's been, I've had this for years now. And then literally the next time I wore it, the neck started, this started happening to it. And so, oh, no. I mean, every time I put it on, it gets a little worse, but we're going to send it out. We're going to get it fixed. It's happening a little bit in the back too, but. I, I will say this is, this is, this is American luxury, right? This is the kind of Nantucket going stepdad umbro wearing thing. Like I don't, it's my favorite sweater, but I'm letting it cook. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to yeah. uh, like, worry about. This tour like, of vents at the ranch. Yeah. It's yeah. Ralph, I mean, baby. I, I want to get it fixed, but I also like, I want to keep a little bit of that because also I went, this is like the perfect sweater for like the beach in the spring mm. or like a boat that I don't have yet. Basically Come everything on, that we should be, everything we should be doing right now that we can't is what this sweater yeah. is perfect for. John, that's old money, baby. That's what you're smelling right now. That's the that blue blood. The salt, the it's sand, exactly, it's like yeah, air free privilege. Very, that's old money, dog. It's very something like somebody on Tumblr in 2009 with like maybe four dollars would post <laughs> on their feed, which was me. Yeah. Are you wearing anything underneath the sweater? We're just letting the uh, nips brush that no. orally. <laughs> no, we're we're raw dog. Nips, <laughs> nips on orally. Nips on orally. And uh, what, what's I the guess... fabric? Is it wool? Is it cashmere? What is it? It's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's looking like, like a little cash, like a, a little tasteful blend. blend. Yeah. I think it's a here. I can't. Well, well I can't. We're not going to be able to see. <laughs> I think it's a it's a blend. It's a blend for sure. It's Damn, dude, sure. you are the American dream, guy. I think it is like a cotton cash blend, like a super super open weave cotton cash. I think. 
It's a, uh, no, it's, it's a, it's a mixing pot, man. You know? wide, a nice wide gauge. So maybe the nips, when they ping, they, they see through. Um, what about the pennies under the umbies? Anything? The pennies, yeah, yeah. Well, for, for the podcast, yes. Generally up for debate. But uh, pennies, undies are Sleepy Jones. Oh, oh, nice. Yo, you got any fucking pajamas? We were talking to Chris Wallace recently about the pajama life. I'm, I feel like that's a vibe. That's some more white guy shit. I love that it vibe. Is. I feel like you're into totally. that too. You know, I am into that from a like mental and like this is my brand mm-hmm. perspective. Sure. But I don't have it in me to – I'm too lazy to like be like, now I'm going to put on yet yeah. another outfit sure. for the day. Like. <laughs> If I'm in gym shorts, I'm like, do I need like a nice sweet cotton, <laughs> cottony pajama pant for like so I can like answer the door for my seamless guy for like my fifteen dollar maximum? That's no. a really good Chris <laughs> Wallace impression, by the way. I was gonna say I think you knocked that out of the park. Also, I think that's like, dude, a- I've never, even, I've never even heard him speak. That's just how, <laughs> that's how, that's how, that's how all of our, that's how all the white guys. It's a heart versus mind thing, right? Because like the heart wants what the heart wants as a white man, but then you're, you know, my mind's telling me no. What? Also, yeah. Also, like, dude, the pajama thing, like the pajama, like the full pajama look. He can to- Chris can totally pull it He's off. Handsome He's handsome as shit. You're hot yeah. too, though. You're very hot. Ah, thanks, man. I mean, I love it. But I also don't have that like live, like mm. uh, I've I've blown in from like Hyannis Port or whatever <laughs> vibe. Place? Like what? I'm like Hyannis Port. Yeah, man. That's Why like around the Kennedy. Sounded like you That's were like, doing an English accent, though. I don't know. I. I've had a couple of drinks, so the accents vary, but you know, <laughs> Slap it's, sort of like, <laughs> it's sort of like, I'm like a pretty, I'm not very tall. I'm not short, but I'm also like a pretty, like, I'm a pretty like, bleh, like, like if you had to cast me in Lord of the Rings, like I'm a Gimli. Like, well, no, you're, you're not like, like bro, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not like that guy from, Lord, you're not like that guy from Lord of the Rings with no neck. Hmm. That's Gimli. You have a neck. A neck. I have a neck, but yeah, but I'm not like I'm not like Legolas. I'm not like Bro, oh, not. let me walk down this Rick yeah. Owens you're, with my dick out. Like wait, that's so not me. You're not well, a that guy's twin. To be you're fair, a jock, bro. We get and it. to be fair, that guy's dick was on fucking uh, cold pool status. Like that guy, that poor that poor guy. Which one? There's so many. There's so many foreskins. The and one penises on the, the run one dude. Thing? The one dude that I tweet about dude. once every month. Um, <laughs> usually at like a proceed publication when they're like, "What outfit are you wearing?" And I like send that send that photo out. Uh, his his penis is on small. He didn't he yeah. didn't fluff before. That feels no. like a rookie mistake. You got. I mean, come on. Bro. I'm sure he was nervous, dude. I would be backstage with like a hair dryer and like a rotisserie chicken set up, <laughs> getting it ready. <laughs> A would, you fucking, would you be fucking the chicken? Yeah, what's... Yeah, go on. No, I wouldn't. It's the heat. The okay, heat. yeah, yeah. The but I think it's also, ner- it's, also, it's also nerves and shit. So, um, so in this scenario, you have like a, a, a rotisserie machine like with the door open and you're standing in front of it with your dick out? Uh, <laughs> probably, yeah, I guess. Right. Or Maybe a chicken, microwave. Using the chicken grease to fluff you up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Sure. Shout out, yo, but honestly, yo, shout out to that guy for just like, putting it all out on the line for the love of the game, dude. He just loves dick ovens, bro. He's out yeah. here. Yeah. Real. Man. Also, like, dude, models, they go in there and they're like, they're basically, they got to do what they're told. And sometimes it fucking sucks. I mean, like, yes, granted, fringe benefit of being a model is you are probably extremely handsome and that comes with a lot of Yeah, but Rick models life. are weird. It's different, right? He might have got, yeah. he might have got casted because of his little ass dick. Oh, true. No, he was, he was a good looking which is, fella. Which is fucking really affirmative looking. action. He was a good know? looking fella. Um, all right. Well, I guess that's the whole fit, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Fit check complete. How long has fit it been since complete. you shaved, Januzzi? Uh, I looked at it right before this podcast, and I was like, I should. It's been maybe four days. Oh, since like you like took it down. Yeah, I mean, like, I keep, I have a beard, you know, generally always, and I'll take the beard down to a two, I think, um, maybe once or twice a week, but I've got, you know, now I have a neck beard, so I'm like, I'm on like a men's rights activist <laughs> vibe right now. Actually, uh, that's a lot of our listeners, uh, be nice to them. Yeah. John, um, 
I feel like you, not only do you have amazing facial hair, and I say this as a guy who has like, you know, this is part of my whole brand, but I have patches and, you know, I don't, it's a whiskery and the colors all are all off, but yours looks solid and robust. Why not just like let it really go? I feel like you could kill that, nail that look. I, I've done that before. I mean, I, when I, all right. So when I really? first started growing a, when I first started growing a beard, I let it grow unruly for like maybe four or five weeks, I want to say. That's, come on, bro. That's rookie numbers. No, I mean like really letting it go for six months. Oh. You know, I'm surprised you're not doing it in Quar. Take this opportunity to get freaky with it. It's tough, man, because it's like, I don't, it's, it's un, one, it's uncomfortable. Unruly. Oh, it, tell it's me about uncomfortable it. unruly. Oh, my, my beard also oh, turns unruly. bright. My my beard will turn bright red um, if I let it go for too long. So like, obviously, you know, obviously I have brown hair, but it becomes red and white as it grows out. Um, you, look like the, you look like that dude in Game of Thrones. Yeah, is it distinguished? Or what is the vibe? Or does it bother you? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it looks fine. I had an experience once, so... This is this is gonna this is kind of a morbid and twisted thing, but I so when I first started growing out my beard, we were going to visit my grandmother. All right, and That's on our way, what did you say? I said that was very sweet of you. Yeah, so we're we're on my way to visit my grandmother. On the way to visit my grandmother at her house, my grandfather died in oh, his chair. Shit. So uh... we're on the, we're like on the way and like the whole family is gathering for a holiday and like this happens and I walk into the house and my grandmother, who I love so much, the first thing she says to me after all of this is (laughs) what is this? Yeah, of course. And I was just like, so it's this weird thing I have that like, I like to keep it clean and maintained. And ever since then I've like tried to keep it real. I also like, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think I have the personality to pull off like an unruly beard because I'm so like tightly wound and high strong about other shit yeah, that people but, would be like, Oh, there's the cool beard guy. And then I'd be like, but you're, uh, you're, uh, you're are you talking, are you talking about me? But now's the time. Yeah. Now's the time. John, John, listen, you're a beefy Chad. You can have the big old beard. Um, sorry about your grandfather. Um, but oh, your and your yeah. your grandma's reaction there, like grandmas are gonna grandma. But what was crazy is um, your grandpa's last words were, "John looks like shit." Have you seen him? It's terrible. Hell hath no fury. Like what? If I was his last words, yeah. God, he's fucking amazing. Hell hath no fury like a grandma shaming techniques. All right, John. <laughs> um, fit check complete. We talked about your beard for an odd amount of time there. Uh, you it's are good and my it's good storytelling. My, baby. my beloved grandfather, may he rest yes. in peace. R.I.P. Why no one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you're a tasteful guy. You're a fucking book writer or bookmaker, whatever you call it. Uh, you bookmaker? A, <laughs> <laughs> a wordsmith. Um, you have this fucking, like, you know, like we talking about this Lux, Lausch, Americana feel about you with the ripped sweater and everything. You're an arbiter of taste. So we want to play a little game we call Fuck With Not Fuck With. It's a working title, John. Still working on the title. Uh, it's how yeah, maybe, no, maybe, maybe a printing press manufacturer such as yourself can help us out. Oh, I'm sorry. Words, We're man. on the Zoom. Can everyone just take a moment to look at Chuck right now? Yeah. Chuck's oh, very hi. This is <laughs> so. Can I? All right, yo. Can I? I'm screenshotting here? it so many times. But he's <laughs> sitting there in the midst of this cookie background. Sham so, is out there. And just he like, looks like he's I'm drowning. It. I'm doing my shit, and, I, and you look like a beautiful bronze statue <laughs> in a cookie temple. I wouldn't go that far. My thing is that this motherfucker gets so high and he, and he gets so fucking prone that he yes. just, he fades into Bolivian, bro. Let me tell you how this is going to go. The, uh, He's not going to say uh, shit. We're doing fit check. And we have, we have all of Chuck's head in frame. By the time we get to last John, next John, we're just going to have the, the top half of his face. By the time you get to a uh, dad ass, Chuck is not even going to be on the screen. <laughs> oh my God, By the time we get to the meat and potatoes, part two behind the paywall, Chuck is fucking out of here. 
Yeah, and I would like to say that, Chuck, people like John, I, I know for a fact, he wants to talk to you. He wants you involved. He wants to catch up. And all the listeners at home want you plugged in, but Dude, you're on airplane mode, my friend. All I'm, I I'm plugged in. Talk, <laughs> all I want to do is talk to Chuck about fucking Charlie XCX. That's oh, it. hell That's yeah. It. Let's go. I'm ready for it. <laughs> We're gonna get midnight, to, baby. Gonna get midnight, baby. It was so fun. We're, We're gonna eating get to at music. midnight. We're going to get to music, but but Chuck, it would be great. If, Real kings uh, eat at midnight. <laughs> if you kept your... If you kept yourself off mute, Chuck, because Chuck Hive has been active yeah. and they're kind of like blaming me and Lawrence and we're like, no, this man's just sucking on mountains all day. Just fucking piping yeah. down that lava at that volcano. There's nothing yeah. we can do. We're not going to, we're not going to chastise you over your drug use. This is America. You can do whatever yeah. drugs you want. No, everyone, yeah. everyone at home is like hashtag free Chuck. Free, have him free himself, dog. Yeah. <laughs> free your <laughs> mind. Yeah, bro. Chuck is too Chuck free. The problem is that me. Chuck needs to Chuck be free. He's too Chuck free. He's too <laughs> free. He's too, free. <laughs> too free. Too free for IGTV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm I'm taking exhaustive notes again. I'm here. I'm engaged. What up? You're, you're literally taking, you're taking zero exhaustive notes. notes. It sounds like you're taking fucking exhaustive quaaludes, man. Oh, what the fuck is going on? Here? Damn. <laughs> no, Boom. It's like, you know, it's, it's only it's only things. I I wish the best for you. Damn, Follow you look like set. The Uzi on straight bully mode just stuffed Chuck into a fucking locker. Yeah. <laughs> I will also. I don't know when. Ass. I don't know when this is being released or aired. Or Tomorrow. whatever. I have the screenshots, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and I will be posting them. Yeah. I'm, well, no. So, I, so I see you thriving, Chuck. Also, I had the run a show open in front of me because I'm multitasking like a fucking Tom Cruise and Minority Report, and you have not taken a single note. <laughs> yo, he listen. Capping. He was. Yo, capping. yo, listen. He, he hasn't taken. I made a copy. Notes. If you go to file and make a copy, then it's easier because then you won't see all my notes as you're going. We like. I want to. I don't want to like fuck up notes. what you guys are doing. The notes keep you honest in real time, dog. You can't fuck babysit up what we're doing. You cannot derail us. We are invincible. We are. We are immortal. <laughs> we are immortal, Joe. <laughs> Chuck, stop. Stop capping. No, I'll, I'll head, copy and paste them then. Get your, get you your don't head believe my ass. Game. Control yeah, C, Chuck, Control V, man. Save my yo, fucking Chuck, life so many we, times. We've lost Chuck's chin. Chuck's chin has dipped below the frame. <laughs> I'm now, 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 now I'm trying to fix these notes, bro. What? <laughs> yo, right. fix these look, nuts. Look, Chuck. there it go, there it go, there it go. <laughs> I just wrote in my Chuck notebook that. that I have here, Chuck, dip below the frame. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is, that how, is that your writing process, John? You just, you just jot down notes before you make a book? Yes. Actually, Yo. when I have to write something, I will open a blank page and just start writing random shit. And whatever starts taking, that's like where I go. My notebooks are insane. Constructive criticism is going to occur about five and a half hours from now. However, mm -hmm. I'll just put this up, up top right here. Write the fucking throwing fits home. Yeah, the bro. Dome. The bio oh, history. Biopic. Dude, oh, it, would be, play? it would be so fun because, all right, so the Throwing Fits tome would begin, obviously, a, a, about a decade ago, right? Probably. Right? Probably, yeah. yeah. I dude, don't know, dude. You could, so... you could go all the way back to the Big Bang if you want. You know? Dude, we're going to get, I'm, I'm sure this will come up. You can up, Terrence Malick watch... the fuck out of this if you want. Yeah, opening, opening the... shot, opening shot, interior, our daddy's nuts. Ooh! Ooh, baby, yeah, not even just, just a, a flicker fucking, in those nuts, just a flicker. just a fucking little a little splooge rocket, man. Yeah, exactly. But and that, sperm. Yeah. To watch to watch all of the people that you know you guys kind of came up with over the past decade or so, and to see where they ended up is such an interesting thing to me because we've lived we've lived long enough to see a lot of people that you know, we fucked with back in the day, become people that we necess we not necessarily fuck with today. And I'm not, no, 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 no. Well, you don't need to talk about James and I, like, in general terms, you know? You could just say it. No. Obvious, I mean, obviously, I fuck with you guys. But Do you like, think we're doing the best or the worst of the everybody? Worst, the worst. The worst? Absolutely. No, yeah. I absolutely... All right, all right, all right. I'm going to... I mean, Chuck looking like a bronze god aside, yeah. I will say, I think you guys are actually doing the best and slash the most. And <laughs> we are doing the most. <laughs> yes, yes, sweetie. Absolutely, sweetie. <laughs> yes, hunty. Go. But <laughs> I to say, but like, dude, it's like you guys, you I mean, you guys saw something happening that I don't know if anyone else necessarily saw, or maybe people saw it and were like, man. What was that? The fucking end of the world? The the, the post-sneaker world? <laughs> we saw COVID. I don't know, man. 
But it's fucking public it's knowledge. COVID, you can go ago. on your fucking John, Patreon. John, we have great you, taste. People are fucking with it. John. What's that? John, we, James and I have great taste. You have great taste. That's why I'm on the show. We get that. And that's why we're about to start off this next segment, Fuck Would Not Fuck With. It's still yes, a working it's title. Still. We're, yeah, here's the thing, John. We're gonna throw titles. we're gonna throw some categories at you. Don't worry. We're gonna talk about socks. We want to know what within those categories you are fucking with and what you are not fucking with. First up, obviously, we love King Bernard, but we are capitalist. Po- well, no, we're a podcast existing in a capitalist framework, so you can't help but ask what brands you are fucking with. Yeah, uh, I've actually been fucking a lot with. You guys know that brand, Save Khaki. <laughs> SKU. Yeah. yeah, bro. Wait, they still exist? Deep cut. He's digging yeah. the crates. Let him dig in the crates for one yeah. fucking second. So, so we live we live next to one of the stores. And that's like, I feel like Save Khaki is like also like a very like had its like big time uh, a while. No doy. Yeah. Lord, look uh, at your in, like, in the first Obama administration. Yeah, um, it's, that's it. Like I, I, listen, the best way to describe this with all love and respect in the world it's a deep cut it you know yeah. no one's checking for it anymore it Listen, was a thing it's not really but the shit is still good i had a t-shirt yeah. from them it was very soft i want to ask you this were they able to break free of the khaki shackles <laughs> or are they still i mean i think the, khaki, the, khakis. Yeah, the, khaki, the khakis have been saved but that's not i mean i only there's one specific thing that i go there for and khakis. it's no, no, not even close. I can't, I don't. <laughs> you go there for the savings. <laughs> the raw, for the raw denim. I go there. Okay, so we live, we obviously, we live near the store. And what you, what's your address? Yeah, where do you live? Right, I knew that was coming. Well, it doesn't really matter because my address is about to change, but I'm not going to tell you anyway. Yeah, we'll you, about there's, still enough, there's still enough time for you to get John Lennon, so be careful. Yeah, this is true. This is true. I mean, stranger things have happened on my block, but um, like what, so stranger than the, people getting assassinated. Yeah, I saw a Timothee Chalamet once. That's pretty strange. Timothee Chalamet. Timothee. Timothee. You, saw the, you saw the assassination of Timothy Chalamet on your block? No, he was alive. Oh. But he did completely just fucking sun me and turn to the yeah. side right after he got famous. What was his face? Um, what? He was wearing, I couldn't see much. He was wearing an overcoat and a scarf and he was with a girl and it was, it was like, it had just snowed or something. There was no one on the block. And I swear to God, you know, I'm walking up and we have a pretty quiet street in general. He sees me, makes eye contact that like a stranger is approaching and me in my head is already a million, a million things are going off right now. And he looks to the side and like stares at the wall with this girl and just waits for me to pass and is like smirking. His, as if his, he's, like, his, like his narc radar went off. He was like, this dude is bad news, like corny yeah. old dork. I'm going to pivot. This dude with his, his bag from Save Khaki is going to yeah. come up here and just be like, oh my God, call me by your name. But yeah. um, how are, uh, how are Sympathy's uh, cheekbones? Sharp. Ooh, sure. Sculpted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to save khaki. Yes. Wait, so, hold on. This is crazy. I feel like um, I'm having a vision. I feel like we're going to be talking about you getting sunned a lot in this episode, maybe by your grandma. I don't know if that yeah. happened already. Maybe by Andre Leon Talley. I'm just having a vision of the future. I don't, I don't know. I just ha- I have yeah. a vibe. You know, I don't know. A lot if it's of gonna good, be, <laughs> good, yeah. good joke. It's going to be in the description, but good joke, Lawrence. Yeah, no, it's cool that a lot of people consider me a punching bag. <laughs> I love it. It's fine. <laughs> I Yo, got a little dope. my man. My man's a fucking everlast, bro. So, what are you actually yeah. copying at Skakies? <laughs> um, there, I would say their Henleys are my favorite. Oh, Henleys, like, oh, God. oh that's oh, a du- that's a double L, bro. That's a what's dub. the, okay. What's your problem? This is why I don't want to come on this show. Anymore. We don't like Henleys. We don't like Henleys on this pod. We're no, not we're fucking, an anti Henley podcast. Yeah, we're not. We're not bro. gold panners from the 1880s. Yo, that's our whole thing Henleys. Is, I'm a book writer. <laughs> On our whole thing is the post Henley world. Have you not? You know this. Come on. Your whole thing is the post everything world. We dude, fuck with Don Henley, dude. If you if you went back, you go back eight years. You're in Michael Bastion cargo shorts and all of that <laughs> fucking shit. So like, I don't yeah, want to. Hey, guess what? Not a not a goddamn Henley around my neck, boy. So the watch guy, yourself. The guy who yeah. invented Henley said, "Fuck it, buttons." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're really they're really good for just like um like. Can I ask you a question? House. Can I ask you a what, real what, question? When do you, when what is the weather that calls for a Henley when there's like a slight breeze at your neck? Like, <laughs> no, it's like it. 
No, I mean unanswerable. Just, it's an unanswerable question. Yeah, it's a paradox. Yeah, honestly, right? the garment, it's pretty much the garment is a paradox in and of itself. Is it a thermal? Is it a t-shirt? Is it a fucking pajama? Well, it can be. It can be a thermal, but like I wear them pretty much around the house, like lounging around the house, or if it's like the fall, and it's basically like you're just wearing a long sleeve tee. It's not like. And I but I leave like one button open. It's not oh, like how a, how cute of you, dude! I just have this like in oh my god, in, what in the fuck, guys? <laughs> to me, when I see Henleys, I just think of like a like an old farmer like trundling his way to the fucking outhouse. Like trundling? And has, like, yeah, and he yeah, has like we got to go back door. to trundling. Is that real? Trap door? Yeah, look it up. <laughs> we got oh, the, I the, can. Oh, and I will. We got the Tsar of trundling here. Um, I anyway. had, well, you know what? I've spent some time on a farm before, so maybe that's where it comes from. Did you pee and poo in an outhouse? No, but have you have you you've never heard the farm story before? Just tell it right now, dude. No, You're a podcast the story. Yeah, this, uh, uh, it's well, a, we this had, is a uh, platform for storytelling. So. Yeah, we're, well, <laughs> all right. So w- a long time ago, our grandparents lived on a farm, and it was like you know, okay, we trundling, going, trundling plays. I'll give it to him. It's a verb. It means move or cause to move slowly and heavily, yeah. Lawrence, typically in noisy stop. or uneven ways. All right, Lawrence, you need to stop with the second laptop and like googling shit, and then like I'm coming, on my back, coming back forty five seconds later, be like, oh, actually, the thing that was said was this. Like, I'm a warrior. Past it. Just past it. If you you're, don't know that about me, then get the fuck off this podcast. You're a podcast reply guy. 45 seconds later. Oh, it was Brian Cox. That's the actor's name. 45 <laughs> yeah, seconds yeah. later. No. 45 seconds later. Oh, tr- confirmed trundling is a word. I know trundling is a word. My boggle score is off the fucking charts right now. I've never told the lie in my entire life, and I'm not going to start now, and especially not on my fucking podcast. That's so, it. Januzzi, your grandparents uh, were on a farm where they grew Henleys. Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a Henley growing operation. No. So we were, we were going up when we were kids, and there was a thunderstorm, and the um, – Dun, the barn dun. got struck by lightning Damn. and all of the barn burned down Damn. and along with everything inside of it. Were there animals in there and shit? Yes. Could you hear like the goats like screaming as they were burned alive? We weren't there. The when silence it of the lambs? We were, like, literal, the literal silence of the lambs. <laughs> we were like on, we were on our way up. And by the time we got there, it was just kind of this like, Damn, you know, there spooky. was like the stone, like, you know, foundation of the barn. And then it was just like Bones. black ashes, like smoking. Wait, John, so when you're saying when you get arrested for being a serial murderer, this is what your origin story is going to be? A lot of people trace my sense of humor back to that just because like you slaughter. you're a kid and you're like, well, my animals all caught fire. <laughs> because, because your grandfather was wearing a Henley. The humanity. Henley's, actually, Henley, Henley's the attract electricity. Humanity. Henley's attract electricity in the sky. That's what brought the fucking lightning down and charred up all the yeah. horses and goats oh. and shit. Or the horse. I fucking animals. hate you guys. I like my Henleys. <laughs> and you know what? They're really good for just like hanging out at home, at home which is wait, exactly what we're all doing right now. Wait, do you wear them because it like shows off your fucking buff pectorals? No. Okay. So this is, this is my biggest gripe with Henley's is every fucking men's magazine will be like the shirt that will get you jacked. What? (laughs) Yes. No, it's like, it's a big men's magazines will write about Henley's as it, because it makes you appear more muscly than you are. From the boardroom to the barbell. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) But Henley's are, Henley's basically like exacerbate every shortcoming of your body. Like if you so yeah, stop not, wearing them, bro, stop wearing them. You're, this is well, the, no, I mean, if you wear a black, if you wear like a black one, it's fine. But like, you know, it's, they're not, they're not necessarily easy to wear. So you use it for motivation. We lost James. <laughs> no, I use it. I use it because they're comfortable. Oh, okay. It's purely a function over form argument. Yeah. I mean, like I very rarely, will be like like you I feel like you would very rarely see me outside of like the house in like a Henley and like sure jeans or something like that. Yeah, I mean this all, all I'm hearing is like, hey, I'm John Genuzzi. I need like some really cool long sleeve tees that I'm gonna be proud of. Enough to wear at least outside. Yeah. Cool. It's so cool that they have three buttons. I love a long like, sleeve pocket tee, dude. That's what I like. No buttons at yeah. all. No buttons need apply, doggy. That's my yeah. Long sleeve tees, for some reason, I don't know. I, they look odd on me. I have, it's just, but a Henley, I guess, looks fine. I don't know. The logic is crazy. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I fuck with their shit, and then, like, I don't know. As of very recently, too, I've also been thinking about the row very much oh, because mm. one of the, because of the divorce, which, mm. like, I, you know, I don't understand for many, many, many reasons. But, like, I fuck with the row extremely heavy. Do you for own many, any <laughs> row? I do. I think I have one. Stop. I have one sweater wow, from the row. Wow. What? Wow. My man's getting Are money. Are you kidding me? You're getting that? You're getting Jonah Hill money? You got a sweater from the row? I think, all right, so I also come from, I also have a very fortunate position in that my birthday is in the very beginning of December, and my family typically gives me Mr. Porter gift cards Mm. before Black Friday, so I generally, like, yeah, I can get, like, you know, I, I make those effective. I do, I love the row very much. It's, obviously, it's extremely luxe kind of shit, and... I will say though the fit can be challenging if it's not if it's not black from the row or it's not like outerwear or something that has like a you know like a like a heftier kind of fit I can't really fuck with it I got a gray sweater from there that I was really excited about and I was just it's like a good oh. quality do you enjoy it do you wear it a lot Well no I returned the gray sweater because it was oh. extremely unforgiving on the in the fit department but the black worked fine oh okay so you so you so you do have the sweater in black and you're a fan yes yeah what, i mean was it worth every fucking penny all one million pennies yeah dude i don't know i don't fucking know i mean like i think that i think it will last me much longer than if i bought like oh, a true, much yeah. cheaper cashmere from, sweater from like saturdays from, Uniqlo? <laughs> from saturdays <laughs> Right from from unnamed brand X. When you when you put, point. Well, let me ask you this um, because a friend question mark of the pod Chris Black he does nips on cash but he's rocking that cheap fucking gross Uniqlo cashmere which probably doesn't even qualify as cashmere under like the European standards only against like <laughs> you know the U S. That's FDA. racist. No, I'm saying that yeah, European fucking... standards are more rigorous than U.S. standards when it comes to the, you know, that quality. But Uniqlo so, is a Japanese corporation, my G. What I'm asking is, uh, when you when you do, you, first of all, do you go nips on cash <laughs> with the real cashmere? And that, I guess that's my only question. <laughs> yes, I I do nips on cash pretty much all the way around because I also am generally going with crew necks these days, and I find it really difficult to. For me personally, like, I, if you're wearing a crew neck sweater and a crew neck t-shirt under it, the necklines are never going to match to right. be like perfect across. And that really fucks with me. And then if I'm wearing a collared shirt underneath, even if it's like fitted and has like stretch and like give and all that stuff, it still creates this weird like under structure. Up and yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I'm like a... I'm like an extra in like a Nancy Myers like movie. I guess it's, it's, that's it's that's a compliment. Vibe. That's a compliment though. That's a good reference. I like a, I love a fucking Nancy Myers. Fucking John, you're like, you're like me. Uh, you're like you're like a uh, uh, you get real wound up over the details, and you're kind of like a silhouette guy. <laughs> you're about like the general, yeah. the macro, hundred um, percent, a real wanna... a real under the hood type guy. Real, <laughs> a real, a real so, macro oh, enthusiast. Lawrence, if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be in a Nancy Myers movie, I am not an extra. I am a lead. I. That's where I'm yeah. at with that. Essentially, like the house belongs to me. Uh, middle to late stage uh, woman. Can I just say, yeah. I really hope that I'm out of this Meryl whole, Street. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Out of this whole uh, Mary Frankie Kate Olsen. Et all right, I'm talking now. Out of this whole Mary Kate Olsen uh, Sarkozy divorce, the best thing that could happen is we get a Down for So Long remix mm. from Ezra. Update. As you guys know, Mary Kate said his Ray Bans were off brand. He kept his mouth shut and he shook Sarkozy's hand, spit Damn. in the ocean, stole a handful of the sand. Damn. 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 Dude, this pot changed my life. Mars. Changed my life. <laughs> so fucking uh, what other brands are you fucking with besides uh, any brand that allows you to put nips on cash? Uh, all right. I mean, I feel like a lot of people say this on the pod, but I, I do. I do fuck with Bodhi in mm. very much way. I think you were, that, you were early. You were early on Bodhi. I will say that. I I do. I love. I love the quote. I mean, like the shirt. I will say the button down short sleeve shirts are very much my vibe. And like, especially for like spring summer, it's difficult for me to kind of to do a lot of the Bodhi stuff in the fall winter. It also the fit with me on Bodhi is tough. Their shit is, you know, 
uh, well, I guess her shit, Emily, Emily Bodhi shit is, it's very short. Like if like a gust of wind comes along, like I'm full, like I'm Marilyn Monroe, like, yeah. But it's but, also for a dude with big shoulders, like, uh, it's very boxy. I feel like that fit would yeah. kind of like actually work for you now. It fits, it fits very well in the shoulders and it does, but it just grazes kind of like halfway down like the waistband of my pants. So it's like, mm. it's a little short for my taste and like a little short it out. Yeah. And all of her stuff, all of her stuff is very like, um, you know, it's all handmade. So everything is very, every piece is extremely unique. So like, you know, I might've gotten a medium or a large or whatever in this shirt and it's a little short, but the right. next guy, it might be like a little longer. Um, it's like her, the, the store. Dick. It's unique and a little short. It happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think the store is, is dope. I mean, I it's really so great. I went, uh, I really like the smell doing more. Yeah. How's it, how's the, how do you like the smell of the Bodhi store? Great. Right, the smell. I don't, I don't know if I remember the smell. I think it was fine. Chuck, do you want to talk about the it was, it's really good. It's a blend of um, what's that brand? Diptyques, I think. Yeah, uh, it's it a diptyque really candle good. and a and a, some burnt hair and a foot. I think is the blend. You got you and guys know that diptyque? You guys know that diptyque candle like Baez or whatever? Uh, specifically, know. no. You know, but go on. you know how you know how the diptyque candles like the letters on the candles mm-hmm. are all like kind of jumbled. Sure. Yeah. There's one that's like Baez or something, and it just looks like it says babies. And it really, like, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Joan Baez? This I shit smells like babies. I don't even know if it says Baez. But like, oh, you're, just, you're, like just, like, we, you're just throwing it out there. I'm just this always candle like, smells we, like, when babies. I'm in the store, I'm like, are we going to set these babies on fire? And let's fucking, anyway, but let's do it. But yeah, John, I mean, are, there any, Bodhi, are there any, so you're fucking with Bodhi heavy. Are there any brands you're not fucking with? that whether yeah. like they're too overhyped or they're just not for you maybe they don't fit your fucking gargantuan thighs your tie tings um who are they uh well you know i have not fucked all right well, well this is all right i obviously i'm not fucking with lululemon right now which is tough because i liked lululemon for a while and then there was the controversy with the art director and that whole situation and it's just like you guys need to get your shit under control. Wait, what, um, was, what was that? Because I know, I, I know about the controversy with the founder who was like, turned out to be like a sexist or, or like me too or something. What's the, what's the art director? So this was fairly, this was fairly recently and actually related to COVID, but, and I, I'm, I'm probably going to fuck up some of the details here, but it don't matter. One of, someone who worked at the company and I believe was an art director promoted on their social media a shirt i don't think they had designed it but it was kind of related to covid and it was like an image of like um like a chinese restaurant takeout (laughs) container with bat wings that said bat fried rice and it was all tied to covid have multiple people so stupidly gotten canceled by liking this terrible dumb t-shirt design because I thought I knew an, uh, another person who got called out, but I don't think that person was an art director at Lululemon or maybe, I don't know. Is that like a, was it a prominent person? I all, the only thing I saw of that shirt was the Lululemon thing. And like, I don't know the guys. I, it they appears definitely the didn't design it. It was another, it was some like no, fucking. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely <laughs> not a Lululemon, Lululemon was like, product. All right, here's my genius idea. <laughs> It was probably a barstool shirt. <laughs> no. Dude, all I have to say Stop is that. I, I once walked into a place that sounds somewhat similar to what you're describing right now, James. And I remember being really fucking. What, barstool when you did the podcast last time? <laughs> I'm not sure what this place you're speaking of is, oh, but right. I do remember walking in and being like, I. I promise myself. I will say I'd this. I will say this. Like, There's a. <laughs> one of the was bars- went around asking, "Does anyone have any free racist merch for me?" I would love one some. of the <laughs> one of the speaking of racist merch. One of the barstool affiliates, I think Old Row Official, which is like the more conservative branch, yeah, yeah. or account. Like they're Press like that for like a million dollars. I heard. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the have, they, they, they have. They have like a they brand. put out merch. Right. They put out merch TV. that said like "Thank you," you know, like 
Chinese government shut down spring break or some shit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but now it, it's becoming oh, a thing. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, know, people I are read. people are fucking. Dude, it's becoming. I, so I saw a thread where somebody documented all these like LA influencers with you know two hundred thousand followers that were like in twenty sixteen like I'm a nasty woman I'm with her vote Hillary uh, hashtag meet like you know me, all about the Me Too movement but now are pushing like the pandemic video um, and are like true believers in this shit like they're not getting paid by like you know the fucking Koch brothers like they're actually like yo don't take the vaccine when it comes here. Is this uh, even remotely surprising? What are we like? That's, I don't know. Right, it's, fucking wild. it's fucking wild. It's it's even if it's not, it is still yeah. crazy to see these like people, these influencers, with, like two hundred fifty thousand followers that are like, yo. And I guess we, you know, kind of know one of them. But one of them is like, or, what? these women are like, you know what I'm talking about? Oh shit! All right, fucking about. go off, King. But uh, they're like, yeah, go watch this twenty six minute pandemic hashtag Obama Gate, and she's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. yo. Yo, I will say the bigger problem here is that, listen, if influencer culture is going to be the dominant cultural art form, then there's a responsibility. And that's why James and I are here as thought leaders. And we're going to bring the entire Thrill Gang, all 17 million of them, into the future. John, what brands are you not fucking with? Besides Lululemon. Besides Lululemon. Uh, Yeah. I mean, the whole Lululemon thing was fucked over. And, like, obviously, like... They didn't design it, that guy. And that guy was swiftly let go Executed. from Lululemon. He was guillotined. Um, he was guillotined. Yeah. Do you know, and I, I, you know I have a bone to pick with to, as of today is Instagram. Oh, yeah? Ooh, the, breaking news. All right. So do you guys get the notifications on, like, the DMs or whatever? Oh, it yeah. says, like, the person's name, not, like, their username. Yes. Oh, that's so, I don't know these people's names. <laughs> yeah, facts. Like, I'm so like, stupid. like, and it's, it's really weird because like, it's like, oh, Nicole has DM'd you. And I'm like, there are many Nicoles that I, Karen, that's, a product, this could be. that's a product update with pedestrians and civilians in mind, not the thought leaders of the future. I don't like, know these heathen purposely, names, these zealots. There are so many people I leave on red because I know them by user. Well, that's rude. That's, you shouldn't do that. You have a responsibility as a thought leader to answer every single question. You know, do, you know how many, <laughs> do you know how many times throwing fits is going to get the notification, Chad has DM'd you? Hell yeah. Karen has DM'd you? <laughs> <laughs> one, one Karen. Dude, you, be- you better get back to Karen because she's fucking insane. She's nuts. Karen They're all nuts. Off. All right, so you got beef with, in- with IG. Yeah, what just else? with the IG product update. Um, Speaking of, so you're a big TikTok guy. You're you're a huge TikTok guy. Yes, I fuck with TikTok. Absolutely. Why are are you a creator on TikTok or just a consumer? No, I think that no to which I, one? No, no to being a creator. I can't be a creator on TikTok. It's too it's too sus. I mean, do like, have, do you have any? Do you have any public videos at all? On TikTok, no, no, oh, fully, sp- fully a spectator sport for me. I think that, you know, it's you have to when when all of these things like these platforms come up, like you kind of got to let the community that takes them and claims them run them. I think, and like if I started going on TikTok and doing like TikTok dances or something, it would be so just fucking lame. There's but I could like, see, I could see, I could see uh, a whole like Januzzi cookies montage being made on TikTok. Ooh, yeah. Or, like, yeah even, like, I mean, like, or even your dance compilations uh, existing on TikTok. Yo, that's a VP of yeah. content giving yeah. you free advice, Januzzi. Take notes in your fucking journal, bro. You're a VP, man. I, for, I always forget that. Yeah, yeah. since we're a, I'm a PP of content. Wait, wait, John, besides actually James's great advice to have some type of like Januzzi cookie branding shit on TikTok. Did you just, did you just write process. that down? You just wrote that you down? Should, in your it's good. No, I wrote VP down and then I circled it. <laughs> God it's, damn. It's spelled, it's spelled PP. This is, this, is, this is just the fucking business card seen in American Psycho. Um, John, you should be on TikTok. You should, uh, you should get involved, bro. There is a fashion e-boy TikTok thing happening. These are all like Twinkie dudes. You should come in and fucking jock it up and you could be fucking famous in no time. You Bro, like- Brian Boyd just got on TikTok like two weeks yeah. ago. He's a fucking, he has like millions and millions of views. And he's, he's a like, grown ass. Boys, he's such a fucking legend. Bro. He's on he's TikTok. A, he's a grown ass woman. He's like, all your workout shit could go on TikTok. That would translate yes. well too. Again. 
That's true, but it's tough because it's like I actually have no idea what I'm doing with the workout shit. It's I'm working. Just like I'm, I'm gonna put myself in pain, and I feel like fitness influencers would see it and be like, "This is bad for you." What? What? No, oh, fuck them. Yeah, that's come on, bro. All you need to do is get on the for you page. That's it. This free, isn't the Olympics. This is just you know we're trying to. Page. We want to empower darts, you, darts. bro. We want to right. empower you. Listen, man, like, I don't even know if I have, like, the time for another one of these things. <laughs> you, got like, nothing, you got nothing but time. Come on, bro. That's a bad excuse these days. Yo, I you're cranking out it. content at fucking TFHQ, bro. Come on. All right, maybe. Maybe we'll get All right, let's move on to the next category as you, as you, ponder, your, uh, your, you ponder your TikTok username. Um, socks. Big socks. topic for you. I'm sure you love talking about Jeez. socks after yeah. diving in. Uh, to the world of socks for the last like I don't know six to nine months. What socks are you fucking with right now, John? What are socks? What are socks? What? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just like sh- I just want socks to be a shoes. Socks mm. shoes. Mm. Is that the official? Is that in the dictionary? Socks. Now I don't know, but that shoes. sounds nice. All right. So yeah. obviously, like all right. So in fit check, obviously I'm wearing Bombas. I fuck with Bombas in a big way. I think Bombas are great socks. Shout out Randy Goldberg. <laughs> Yeah, Randy. I just, the richest. Yo, him. yo, James. Honestly, give me one second, John. Give me one second. Randy Goldberg. Can someone put this in front of Randy? Get Bombas on the fucking horn to bang our line and give us like a million dollars. We will yo, get him to fucking socks. get him to fuck. Yeah, get him to invest in the pile. Oh, we'll give we him one. Sold, we already sold one million dollars of NA socks. Let me sell another Dude, million of. Bombas. I will say oh, it's not even that. NA. Yeah, but it's the same, baby. Lawrence, it's not even that. Let's Randy give him. Goldberg. Let's give him one percent of the pod for a million dollars. <laughs> Done. All Easy, right. Randy. Done. Bang my line. John, NA socks, fucking with, not fucking with. Fuck with, absolutely, NA socks. Big fuck with. Mo- like, also, I fucked with before the pod, but like, I, those, I like what's going on there, and I think, it, I think that shit is good. What other sock brands are you fucking with that people should check out? Because socks like, that's are the important. official sock of the post sneaker world, NA. It's true. Yeah, no, well, they're great. I think <laughs> they got to pay us. That, yeah. that, that official status expired uh, oh, when they stopped sure. paying us. Hey, but, Nick. Uh, yeah. Nick, yeah. if you're also listening, and I know you are, bang our line as well. <laughs> uh, I like um, Falky, the German sock brand. What? Or what you call me? Excuse me? What do you call me? Falky. Falky. Oh. F-A-L-K-E. Um, okay. Anonymousism is very good, too. Ooh, yes. Big guess. I mean, and then, and then you also have the whole world of, like, all that fucking designer sock shit. Like, I, no. don't, I would not fuck no. with an off-white sock at all. Um, obviously if you did you like, wouldn't be on this podcast <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time I'm shame like, you, you put an fucking... elder yeah, elder statesman I would not. elder yeah. statesman yeah, elder, statesman, put an elder statesman sock on a silver platter and you hand that to me i'll be like yes oh, I, I, I i deserve do you know how sweaty cashmere socks are yeah but i feel like if you're in the market if you're a, the kind of person who can afford an elder statesman sock you are also probably not wearing it like like outside of your home and yeah, you can bring it on, like a, on a crisp winter control. night. Yeah. yeah. And you can climate control wherever you are. You just you need some, pay them to do that for you. My thing is a cashmere shot sock. My entire life has been this. It's a trick. It's a trap because it's so, you just want it. It's so cozy, but you just, it gets too sweaty for the dogs. You know, that's yeah. why I prefer like a wool yeah. rag sock. Still more breathable. That's just my trick of the trick. Yes. Yeah. Um, like, John, like a, what's on your yeah. Mount Rushmore? What's your Mount Rushmore of socks? Four socks, unranked, goat socks of all time. Yeah. And they could be uh, ones that have, like, personal meaning to you, like um, the sock you jerked off into growing up. Which we'll get to under <laughs> that ass. I don't, know, I don't know if you can necessarily qualify that as a sock at this point. Um, <laughs> but I would... <laughs> <laughs> a living sculpture. It's more, it's more like an it's like more like an ironing board at this point. Um <laughs> I would All right, so I do have some very very ancient American apparel socks actually, mm. which like obviously American apparel has like a whole weird crazy history. But and I bought so them. Except yeah, I bought Doug Tarney is crushing it with Los Angeles apparel. Everyone loves that shit. And they do blanks for everyone. So nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Pathetic. So, and they have, I bought them kind of like when I was, I think I hadn't, I hadn't been in this city that long. Maybe it was a few years. And I bought them out of a moment of like, I just need some fucking socks to like get through. And I still have most of them. And most of them are in pretty good condition. 
So from a purely like I bought these and they lasted, I would say those. Um, Chuck, did you say something? Chuck just actually played some music and he's now entered the blanket around his head phase of the podcast. <laughs> actually, he looks, like a, he looks like a babushka. <laughs> it's my babushka blanket. boys. It's my it's binky. Yeah. Boy bushka. Um, right, so you got the, so you you got the, the kids giving you like babushka. You got the sexual and, assault ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then. Is um, that what he did? Is that what Dove Charney did? He sexually yes, assaulted boys? Yeah. He was honestly like kind of ahead of his time in that if if, right. if all the yeah. shit, he was if, a visionary, bro. Bro, no. What I'm saying is that if if all the shit that he did happened in like the Me Too era, like he would have been fucking canceled, canceled. Instead, I think that all of it was just like, oh, like, like again, it was just like oh, like this genius, just you know, this one man uh, visionary. But yeah, I do think he got off easy, and I do think that a lot of the shit that he did kind of got like swept under the rug. The biggest problem is that the new shit yeah. slaps. It's so fucking good. It's the best value. Dude. But like you, you know, I don't know. That's what people say. But a man's got to have a code. <laughs> um, all right. What's what's your what's your Abe Lincoln on the Mount Rushmore? Um, all right. So as a fit god, Abe Lincoln, I would say. So the the sock that I work out in regularly is always. I I, I don't want to like. I'm not like trying to like. I don't want to like gas up Bombas too much, but I do wear a Bombas sock every day to work out at the very least. Are That's you like, no, no, not at all. Be. And it's Randy. sort of like, yeah, I mean, I, I love them. And like for the workout thing too, like they have that, like that, the, like the support situation going on and they stay up really well. Also, like, I just, I mean, they're good. They're good. I like them. Do you like the ankle sock or do you like the like crew or like quarter? Like, no, if I'm if I'm working out, I like to do um, a crew length, just because like my legs look very weird in if it's just shorts and then like skin, 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 and then like sneaker. Mm. So yeah, I always go with the crew for that. Um, all right, who's your, who's your Teddy? Who's your Teddy on the Mount so Rushmore? These, all right, do you guys remember wigwam? Songs? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah like they're like, 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 they're like out, outdoorsy, outdoorsy camping brand, right? Yeah, it's a great. Well, yeah, we used to get them. So when we were a kid, when we were kids, my my mom would take us to the same shoe store like every few months or whatever it was. And whenever we every would, few like, months, get, you got new shoes like every one, few months. Your foot grows yeah, yeah, like yeah. once a year when you're young. Yeah, but but also like. What? Old money, shoes. baby. I guess shit, dude. Right. Congrats to you, Donnie. Your foot money. Grows Hi, once a, your foot money, grows once a year. All right. So, like, whenever we would go to the shoe store, I very specific. Oh, fuck. I very specifically remember, like, <laughs> there was a like a a, a barrel in the shoe store, just full of wigwam, wigwam socks, and it wasn't like it was bags of three packs in there, and they were so like soft and plush and like nice. Um, they, it felt like you were almost. Yeah, wigwam is uh, wigwam I mean, is one of those like that's what many of those like, uh, ended up becoming. Truth be told, <laughs> now they're hard. Um, wigwam is one of those like workwear brands where like um that I think workwear like can't like outdoorsy. I don't know, but uh, I definitely always have an eye out for it whenever I fucking go into the blue collar stolen valor store pops here in Greenpoint. Um, I don't are they still around? Yeah, dude, cl- it's a classic. I feel like. They must uh I don't know, maybe they licensed the name. I'm trying to look right now, but either way, Wigwam, OG, great brand, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Great, great shout out. All right, so that's John. three. You. Who's your who's your George yeah. Dubs? The Mount Rushmore of socks. I don't know. I still I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with Wigwam now. I got you that. But yeah. all right, I tell you. Hold on, can I say so- Wigwam is America's sock company since nineteen oh five. So let's just leave it at that. Fire. Nineteen oh five. That's pre Titanic shit. Yeah, 1912. Oh, yo, I always use that as like a line of demarcation in my own mind to kind of a, to to date things. That's crazy. That's weird. Yeah, they probably uh, they probably wow. employed some uh, shady, you know, tactics in their hiring practices and whatnot. If anyone goes back to the "There Will Be Blood" for real, for real, I literally used the same thing. I was like, oh, by the way, like to give you context, uh, 1912 is when the Titanic sunk. No, yeah. no one's yeah. going to do that. <laughs> I, I'm just fine. Who's Fourth and final, who is your, what do you say, George Washington? I mean, I feel like I have to shout out like some kind of dress sock here, but I don't really wear dress socks very much. 
So I'm going to go with a Nike dry fit. Just like Ooh, super the drifts. classic. The air drifts, dude. Like, yeah, just like pretty much like you could wear it. You could wear it if you want to work out. You could also just wear it with sneakers. It's just like, it's very baseline. Like it's the George Washington. Like yeah. it's, it's like, it's like, this is where it begins. Can I ask a question to everyone here? But John, do you guys even listen to the podcast? Remember Gashi? He called him the air drift. Yeah. It's hilarious. Do you yeah, guys not listen that. to the show? I don't. Yeah, he talked, no, about, I don't. He talked I don't. about only wearing yeah. socks once and nothing in them, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. But he called them the. He thought they were dr- like he's dyslexic when he looks down. He, he read drift. Oh, I always thought that's that was very funny. funny. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> God damn. Nice. J- James, can I ask you a question? What is, besides all of the great sock brands mentioned, what is another sock brand that you like that hasn't gotten shouted out yet? Because I have one that I want to put people onto. Um, I mean, I really fuck with NA as, sure. as we've talked about, uh, I fuck with anonymousism heavy shout out Grant Bloodworth sending me some more yo, shit. Yo, Grant um, Bloodworth, holler at me too, doggy. Yo, uh, Nicole McLaughlin, is that her name? Um, <laughs> she is correct. Muji has, Muji does Ooh. fire socks. Muji and oh, yeah. I, but beyond that, I really, I mean, I think I have like some wigwam socks. Um, and beyond that. I think it's just like I I kind of do the same thing with my boxes where I just buy them like you know uh, like a twelve pack of like yeah, a sure. quarter quarter length at a time off yeah. Evil Amazon. What no about one's you, mentioned Supreme Hanes. Well, come on, man. You know, <laughs> LL. Listen, LL Bean socks are really good for fall winter, especially as a boot sock. I love an LL Bean boot sock. Yes, and then entire one hundred percent. Yeah, an entire world makes really good socks too. I like I know fun socks, and we'll probably talk about fun socks. But like, there's definitely a line. Like, I like a color. Maybe a stripe, not like some stance not a polka bullshit. Dot. Yes. Yeah, no. Yeah, there's a very this, fine line no, there. No, no Dwayne Wade, you know, filling in on TNT type <laughs> fucking beat. Can you I can I say some? Sure, yeah, go off. Chuck. Druthers is a good sock brand, and they have some tie-dye ones coming out that are really cool. Also, Kirkland. Ooh. Yeah. Kirkland, right. like the they're like the the warm ones, those are fire in the winter. All right. That's it. If any sock <laughs> brands are listening and want to get on our good side and on our good sock brand list, literally pay us, dude. We can sell socks all yeah, day. I honestly think that's what we're going to be pigeonholed as, just sock guys. So let's bring them on in, dude. Open the floodgates. Let's go. Thinking it's things. Uh, uh, talking of things that we sell all day, Januzzi, what are some sneakers that you're fucking with? Uh, I know that you guys probably haven't worn anything on your feet besides socks in the last, like, you know, two months or whatever. But, like, what's on the feet? What's on the feet? Uh, all right. So sneaker wise, I'm, I'm Adidas loyalist. Pretty much, when I've been wearing sneakers, if I go out now, it's basically just been gazelles. Um, the best Adidas, and, in my opinion. Yeah, favorite. And I get, you know, I get, I'll get a new pair maybe every five months when they kind of wear down. Um, which, like, you know, if you're walking around the city a lot, they'll do. And then I have a pair of Stan Smiths that are they're not like the classic stan smith and i don't even know i'll show them i'll show them to you guys i don't even know exactly what they just have this black square on the back i i have no idea what that is me either (laughs) but i saw them on sale and i was like i needed new white sneakers really bad and i i think i mentioned this on the previous endeavor that we aren't naming but i was i big into the acne adrian's the white sneaker and okay, yeah, yeah. they just, they're very tough to wear in. And I just got to a point where I was like, I can't do that anymore. So I got the Stan Smiths and then I have ultra boost that I wear every now and then, but it's pretty much either the Stan Smith or the gazelle for me. I mean, are you a fan? Like that. Are you a fan of the, uh, our close celebrity personal friend, Jonah Hill, his collab with Adidas superstars, right? Uh, superstars. Yeah. And some like track pants and a track jacket. Did you do Sambas? I saw some a, leaks. I'm not going to say anything, but I, I saw do some like leaks that I, were other stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, I do like. I will fuck with the Sambas. I feel like I fucked with those very much when I was in like high school and middle school, and they're like almost like a a precursor to the Gazelle. I would want to say. Yeah. I mean, like, well, I think but, I think they're part of the. It's a similar part of the the family tree. I I don't know if they're like a direct descendants of one another. Yeah, I mean, like the Jonah. Sneaker is like it's no, not not I don't know for if you. I would, not for I mean, you. Yeah, All I mean, right. I, obviously, he was supposed to send us pairs. Where are pairs? 
I don't know. All right, all right, John. You don't support the homies. We get it. Um, yeah, I fuck, mean, I support off. Jonah. Fuck off, I don't John. support his sneakers. That's right. John. What do, you, what do you what do you think about? Uh, okay, so you're not so you're not fucking with Jonah Hill sneakers. What other sneakers are you not fucking with? Um, I. Uh, uh, I mean, you live in Seattle. You must see all the fuck the fuck shit the t- the cream of the creme when it comes to the fuck shit. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, a lot of those. Uh, I really don't fuck with any kind of hype sneaker. Obviously, the Dior. What was it? Those Dior Jordans from like yeah. a few months ago. Yeah, Obviously, Jordans. no. Extremely no. I don't really fuck with a lot of what's going on at Dior. I tried for a long time, but I can't. Crap. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, what else do I not fuck with? You have I that think... good. You have that good jean jacket, though. Well, yes, but that's. I think that's. Stefano Pilati. Yeah. No, no, I think that's a Chris Van Ash. It might. Oh wait, sorry, it's KDA. Chris Van Ash. Sorry, I I confused. It's, yeah, I was thinking it's, why. It's, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I fuck with Eddie, Dior from that era. KVA and then fucking uh, Kim Jones. You don't have an eye for fashion, yeah. Lawrence. Um, fuck you, bitch. It's my job. What about <laughs> rude? What about non-seeker? <laughs> what about non-seeker footwear? Pregnant paws. What about non-seeker footwear? What's on the feet that I, I mean, I still have, I mean, I still, still, there's a right answer here. Huh? Is there, I I feel like you want me to say something and I want, you're, you're a, you're a pee pee and I need to impress you, (laughs) but I mean, I still have my Gucci loafers. I definitely am not wearing them nearly as much as I used to. And I've got, I have a pair that I bought. (laughs) I have a pair that I bought after Jake Wolf went to Milan and was like, I got Gucci loafers. I was like, well, now I have to get them. And it's like. Explain that thought thing. Process. I don't know. I mean, dude, Wolf is Wolf. And he looked, I mean, he went to. I you get influenced by Jake Wolf is what you're saying. Jake Wolf influenced you. Yeah. I actually think Jake Wolf was the first person I texted after I got them. Um, wow. But whatever. Dubious yeah. distinction. <laughs> Well, he got he had the pointier toe ones, and the Jordan, I got the, the wrong ones. Don't oh, get, those yeah. those are yeah, Ooh, ugh. yeah. And I, I mean, why, I have the slides yeah. too, and the then, Jordan slides. But those are the what? The Jordan slides, the Prince Town, Princeton. Yeah, what is it? Those Prince. are those are better than the full uh, pointy fucking mules. Yeah. Yeah, Jenna has those. They look good on a woman. I think they would probably look good on a man too. But that general, do they do a 1953 mule? They probably do a crushable back, right? I'm sure they do. That would be nice. For the 1953, I don't know. I think they did at one point. I don't know if they do it anymore. And I think, I think the way they they crushable is, back penny loafers, god damn. I still need to get a pair of those. Those are fucking how, big. Yo, it, so they're, I do not, need, they're, not on, they're not on the Essence sale, which was kind of crazy. Um, they weren't. They yeah. must have like been they they must have been uh, excluded from going on sale or sold out. Gucci or Lueve? Lueve. Gucci James? Oh, Lueve. That's a tough call. Lueve, may, Lueve is making some dope shit right now. Although I will say their fit is very tough and the store experience is not there. But really, um, I had a great I had a great experience in, in in store. I went to the store. I asked to try on a shirt, and the the person that was helping me couldn't stop talking about this indoor ski place they went to in new jersey and I but was that's just very like, cool not- can you blame them that's so cool this is oh, that's supposed to be like blame. that's supposed to be like the new mall of america yeah that's more right. interesting yeah. you're boring ass asking for fucking sizes and fitting rooms get out of here dude well and it was that it was a collab they did for holiday or like a capsule with all the animals on it it was cool but like oh yeah but also like it was um it just, it just didn't work out but i think too mm. Other shoes I'm fucking with. I really want to get like I had a pair. I had some churches back in the day, and I really just want like Ooh. a really sturdy, like black fucking churches loafer. English, no, like bench made. Yes. Boom, churches. So yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah, I have a pair. A I have a pair of like wing tips. Yeah, mm. big chunky uh, sole. You know, fucking That's good year. Well, yeah. Do you guys remember that store Aloha Rag? Mm-hmm. They had. So gear, they, I mean, they closed down in Soho a while ago, but yeah, that's old as hell, doggy. Yeah. There was a, I got a pair of wingtips from there from this Japanese brand called Hiroshi Sabuchi. And I have Sounds been trying good. to track. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to track them down. Checks out. For <laughs> yeah. Years. Tracks. And that's like, 
that's sort of that's like a grail for me, like another pair of those because I wore them into the ground. Um, Sounds like a real if you know you know pair of shoes, which is our favorite kind on this show. Yeah, exactly. Do you, is there a butterfly? Do you remember, <laughs> no, but there were hearts. <laughs> oh no! Was it a? Are you thinking of a CDG play Converse? <laughs> no, 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 no. Chrome, chrome hearts. hearts. Think about Chrome, no, no, no. the chromed out. Oh, fucking... dude, we gotta talk about Chrome Hearts because if we're talking about Chris Black nips on cashmere and not mentioning Chrome Hearts, we already talked about Chris Black once. With, are you fucking with Chrome Hearts? Let's go back to brands. Are you fucking or not fucking with Chrome Hearts? No, I am not fucking with Chrome Hearts. Why is that? Because you're a tasteful, understated. You're the type of like. You're the type of like uh, guy that aspires to be the rich dude that drives like a Subaru or a Saab. Volvo. Right? You're not fucking out here in a fucking chromed out like Matador Lambo or anything. You're out here fucking. Yeah. It's understated yeah. wealth. That's what it is. The chromed yeah. out. I want, I want, I want, the, I want, a, I want like the roofless like Land Rover or whatever. Or like a different. Oh, but yeah. You want to kill the, the planet chrom- in a very like aesthetically pleasing way. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I will kill well, the planet, but, but also donate to various organizations that will help save it. But I mean, my thing with Chrome Hearts Cops is and offsets. there's there's different phases of Chrome Hearts, right? Like there's the current phase, like a it's disease. Like, it's like a disease in that regard. Yeah. Onset, like you, if you have early onset Chrome Hearts or something. <laughs> but Chrome Hearts now is it? It has this weird. There's this weird allegiance to it, and I don't know where it comes from, but I remember going to the Chrome Hearts store in like 2008, maybe. And they used to have a whole townhouse in the 60s. I think now they just have a store on Madison. And I was working in a restaurant at the time. And there was this guy who used to come in all the time. And he really liked me. And he would always talk. And like, you know, you know, I was into clothes or whatever. And he was like, I, I don't know if this would be for you, but you should go check out. He called it Chrome Heart. Um, not he didn't even pluralize it no no that's sick but like that's pathetic i remember going <laughs> no, there awesome. and just being like i i can't but that's not but the like, name is it no it's chrome hearts yeah. for sure 100 percent. so he was capping and, well, anyway, i'll tell you a story sorry yeah he just he I mean he didn't give a fuck he just was like he would just talk about how Did much he had the he rings had, on and stuff this was clearly Wayne yeah. Diamond. This was Wayne Diamond to starve uncut gems. Yeah. Wait, did he was he chromed he, out? He was he was crumbed out and like he it was Lil yeah, Uzi he, Vert. He's like it was Lil Uzi and Lil Januzzi, just Spider Man meaning. And he couldn't and yeah. he couldn't read the name of the brand all over his body. That's how rich he was, Dude, Lawrence. Big, yes, exactly. Fucking James gets it. He's so rich he doesn't even care. He probably never went to the store. It just came straight to his fucking house. But I remember I going and it's just brand. like it's too much. It feels to me like David Yerman from Men. Oh, and nice. Like damn. I get like. I mean, I kind of David Yerman for bikers. That's really what it is (laughs) for meth addicts. (laughs) And like, I, I mean, I know some people that wear it. Actually, one of my favorite people who was my first, one of my first bosses wore it. She, but she, she rode a motorcycle and she was kind of, she was kind of like, she was kind of motor and it, it played and it just, it, it doesn't play with people. And like, I, I don't. I don't fuck with it at all. Chrome hearts don't play. Yo, here's my thing. If it's, a, if it's a disease, does anyone know if you can catch it from eating spicy rigatoni at Carbone? Because if so, this pot is infected beyond belief, yeah. dude. We're we're, we're, a, right, we're, so, as, we're asymptomatic. We're, we're asymptomatic. Down, we're down with the sickness. <laughs> who, yeah, bro. Who, Chrome who nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we call that? The, is that the title? Chrome dash yes. nineteen. Chrome nineteen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Um, all right. So, all right. So who of you fucks with Chrome Hearts? Chuck. Chuck. That's it, right? The fake shit felt pretty good. It was like, <laughs> honestly, it was like my hand, my hands were so heavy from wearing all the rings. Like I could barely pick up the fork at Carbone. Like, I could pick up, pick up my big ass wine glass every time they were. Your goblet, coming. your chalice. Yeah. Heavy, heavy is the head that wears the crown, Chuck. Heavy is did- the head that wears the chrome. <laughs> I can't. I can't, man. So that's, that's, just the like title. Have, that's the title doggy <laughs> they used to have a corner up in like bergdorf's like a while ago that was just like this weird black hole and i just <laughs> i can't man it was like next to galliano it was just a very bizarre like little fucking thing going you, on there. you were you were in the uh the party city section of madison avenue galliano yes. well, yes, next I to mean, chrome or wherever the yeah. fuck you were 
All right, Mount Rushmore of footwear, Januzzi. Let's fucking go. Just mm. run through your your AB, your Teddy, your Georgie. Who's the fourth? I forget. You said all of them earlier. I wasn't paying attention. Georgie, Teddy, Lincoln, Lincoln. No, that's no, Abe. That's Abe Lincoln. You said Abe. Oh, Abe, Teddy, George, George, Thomas Jefferson, baby. Boom. Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy big, fucking uh, Jefferson. Big, big time fucking Tommy. Big to- hey, Tommy. Keep it in Tommy. 18th, keep it in 18th century. Biggie fucking blind ass. <laughs> Spicy fucking rigged. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it, dude. Okay. Right, John, I, sorry. I, you're I, saying your mouth. I hate it so all much. Time. I hate <laughs> it. Um, all right. So Ooh, that daddy's starting shoes. to hit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have Adidas gazelles. Yep, number black, one. Black, navy. Um, uh, usually black, occasionally navy, or like that. They have like that, like pow- like they have a blue that's like not fully navy. Mm. Nope. Um, Gucci loafers, full loafers, nineteen fifty four, a hundred percent. Fifty three, fifty three, fifty three is whatever. It was fifty four <laughs> when I got them. <laughs> hey. um, and then more like nineteen sixty nine when you put them on because you're gonna be plowing, boys. <laughs> What? <laughs> keep, keep going, keep going. Right, right. Jeff, cut that. Um, <laughs> no, leave then, it in. Leave it in. Fuck it. I'll do it live. It's saying it. Fuck, man. I mean, Lawrence, are you losing, Lawrence? No, I'm just so high, dude. Oh, wow. All right. I, Same, all right, sorry, brother. So whoops, whoops. <laughs> mm. And then, I, I mean, three or number four, but. We're on number three. And then for number three, I'm sticking with Adidas and the Stan Smith. Um, and then number four, hey, I'll get a go. I'll go with the Acme Adrians still, even though they fucking suck to break in. They are my absolute. Actually, Adrians are going to be number one because they're my absolute favorite shoe. Well, it's unranked. It's unranked. Yeah, there's no unranked. Ranking, unranked. All right, yeah. Then the Adrians are in there, but like right. without pain, Adrians, there is no there. pleasure. Yeah, I mean, dude, they are. I mean, and common projects are common projects, and they are what they are. But like, I feel like. When you, I, they're, tra- they're trash. They're garbage. Woo! Yeah, and like Smoke. when you wear common projects, it makes a very. I I mean I had a pair of common projects Chelsea boots once that were not bad, but you those know, were hitting yeah. so hard, bro. Brunch, the brunch every, highs. Everyone remembers the when Kanye highs. came out in the brunch twos. That sh- that changed yeah. the game, bro. <laughs> the brunch force ones. That the was brunch. that was a joke. The, the free hole. The free the hole first, like. <laughs> The first like shoe shoe, the first like really nice shoe that I got as a grown up was like a pair of Todd's and like a, dr- a driving you know, loafer. I I can't. Rem- I think they were Marcus. At- oh man, now no, I'm getting like. With I think the they were Marcus. Rubber, the rubber like little treadies on the bottom, you know. They had the Whatever dots, not the yeah. not the squares, dots. but the dots. Yeah, for driving those fast. Like the first ones I ever got. And like <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say those are my Rushmore, but those were definitely a gateway. No, that's such a. Weak. And then Lawrence, sure. No, I know it's weak, but I grew up in Connecticut, and like okay. literally a mom from Connecticut was like the first who you. Todd of Todd's is the Michael Jordan of Connecticut. Michael Jordan yeah. of. Driving the strip ball. Actually, yeah. <laughs> do you know what else is on my Rushmore? Boys, do you remember those? There's only four. Green? There's only four. So you got to take someone off. Well, hold on. Let's hear this. Let's 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 right. let. It I will. I will take off. I will take off the acne. No, Not Todd's. Anything the but the Todd's. I will take off. I will take off the Stan Smiths and replace them with. This is a singular shoe. It's not like a brand. Just one shoe. Anything. Just like the right foot. <laughs> it was so good. Of a pair. But there was a pair of linen lace ups. That I got. Lawrence, what? you might remember these from the Tumblr days. Do you remember those Prada lace ups with like the um it wasn't like a creeper sole, no, I but remember. it was like a big I fucking those. rubber sole. With they were the my Espadrille favorite shoe. ropes too, right? Yeah. It was a hybrid Dude. shoe. No, 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 no. Oh? It wasn't those. It wasn't the ones with the espadrille rope, but okay. it was like a men's linen lace up and it had the it had like it had a rubber sole that was like big. I'm, I gotta try to find a photo for you guys. Later. I would love to see. But this is crazy because. Okay, so do you remember when I was talking about how I went to? We were going to visit my grandparents, and like the awful thing happened, and she hated my beard. Yeah, your grandfather. That was the died. first day. That was the first day I wore those shoes, and I fucking love wow. those shoes very much. But well, yeah, that was a, that was a cursed fit. 
Yeah. Well, I guess your beard is not really part of your fit. But the beard, the beard and the shoes killed your grandfather. You, you fucking hate to see it. Find uh, a picture, but the Prada. So they had to have been like good. I mean, that's it's Prada's Prada for a reason, right? So I would actually love to see yeah. a picture, big one up. We'll share. It All right, you. let's move on to the next category: uh, music, John. Bro, gang, not fail, gang. My bad. Have you been dancing with Haim, the new EP? What have you been listening to with the eyes of the size of the head, the ears? So obviously, Heim forever. I was really, really upset that they delayed the album release because of COVID. Because I feel like actually in this time, new music is very helpful and nice. Um, yeah, that's yeah, actually one of I the mean, few. That's one of the few instances. One of the high. One of the few high profile instances that you've heard, I've heard of where it's like pushing it back because of COVID. Whereas a lot of people have just kind of been like proceeding as normal. Yeah, I mean like. So it's interesting too because like Haim, I think has Haim has like a very loyal fan base, and I think obviously when like when an artist is releasing an album, and James, you probably know this better than any of us, but like I feel like when an artist is really been releasing an album, there's a tour tied to it a lot of times, right? Usually, yeah. Uh... So it's sort of like I feel like they probably delayed the release because there's a tour tied to it, and like they can't fuck with di- tour dates right now because I who knows what the fuck is going on. Well, everything isn't everything just canceled. That. Like we got today, our fucking Rage Against yeah. the Machine tickets got pushed back an entire year to August 2021. The we're lads, not gonna be al- we're not gonna be alive by then. <laughs> I know the lads were about to see fucking Rage at MSG. Pretty good seats. We we fucking shelled out, James we and I. Splurged. Like, we splurged. As, as for an upcoming corporate retreat for the core four, no shots at Rob, Jay, or Dunk. But right, so where? All right, so when when you're at MSG, where? What's your ideal situation? Well, who's the show? Or who's performing? Yeah, it depends. All, yeah. All, right, all, right, all right, let's say you're going to Rage. Where do you want to be? Well, I mean, the, the, the old floor. The, the floor would be sick, but I don't think we could survive the floor. Maybe Chuck and right. Chef could, but. Yeah. uh I think that we have like good seats where it's like we're we're near we're near the aisle because we're gonna have to pee pretty often or head to yep. the bathroom wink wink pretty often. Sure, um, uh-huh. that, you know, absolutely uh, for like chicken tenders and French fries and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> we're like like we're like at a forty five degree angle to the stage essentially yep. in like in like two hundred I think yeah. like and we're close hole. we're close to getting banned from MSG. This is no joke. So we just want to maximize every opportunity that we have there. So. This will be the next one. It depends. But like for Rage, like I, for Rage, I feel like you want like Rage is like, it's going to be big sound everywhere. Um, The last MSG I went to was Robin. Shout out the fucking Swedish queen. And we saw seats where we're like, we need to be in the middle and on the floor. Yeah. Seated, but like we need to be like right where the fucking sound is. And it was worth it. Yeah, man, MSG, I mean, MSG is a tough call to do with seating because like you want to be in it and you want to be close, but like, those the floor situation and like especially if your floor general admission can get fucking nuts like it's yeah. not a place you necessarily want to be yeah like pa- I saw um, Pablo there people were dying in the pit because it was a fucking completely wall wall sea of people because you know? Flame showed up <laughs> no fuck Cutty, that. Cutty. Uh, no no I don't even think anyone showed up but either way it was sick whatever moving on all right who else am I fucking with music right now oh, sorry so obviously Heim forever but I think in this whole like you're stuck in your house everything is like very like dour and sad and tragic and like long i've actually been finding a lot of comfort in like extreme pop music and chuck this is where you come in with like the charlie xcx situation because i know you understand where i'm coming from where like i i mean like i've been relying on like a lot of just like shiny happy crazy like teeny bopper shit to just like get me through because i need something to be optimistic and like nothing else really is you know what i'm saying charlie xcx fans we fucking we eat at midnight or whatever time it comes out it's about to be out this is her this is her like quarantine album yeah and uh, i would recommend reading megan garvey's uh article she like profiled her and it was really good and i think that like she's a lot of like the quarantine like people like documenting all the shit they're doing is like boring and kind of whack but like the shit she's done is actually really cool like her green streaming music video was fire cause is like the best song i've heard this year honestly i love dylan brady i love i love i love hundred gex and dylan brady so like that song is honestly a a huge banger 
Yeah, yeah. Wait, I think, John, like, do you listen I'll... to 100 Gex? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Do you listen to um, that? John, explain Gex to John. It's like uh, it's like PC PC, PC music. Uh, it's uh, what? It's like it's like the glittery kind of like pop shit, but it's just like weird at the same time. And that's like that's like it's kind of like how class sounds. I'm gecked out. I'm gecked up on camera. I'm a geck head. I fuck with I, it absolutely. to stay young. You're, yeah, exactly. You're just you're, you're a 32 year old, 33 year old man. 33, stay, bro. 33. Pippin year, baby. Pippin year. Pip my pippin year, baby. <laughs> All right, hang on. I found a picture of those shoes. Oh, sc- right. share your screen. Show, show, show the audience at home. Show the podcast audience. Can I share the screen? I don't know, James. Can he? Sure. No, I, probably I don't know. Put in the chat, baby. Link us to a URL. This yeah. sounds. This is going to be really good podcasting too. Yeah. Oh, cool photo. <laughs> um. Zoom. All right, John. What about what other what other music are you listening to? Like, what's your what's your workout mix? Because you're a big fucking. You're the Sultan of squats. What the fuck are you lateral, narrow, curtsy, back, lunge, squat, into, period? All right. Savage so, what is it? Sav- uh, uh, yes. That that was dope. The Savage Remix was dope. I, I listen to that occasionally when I'm working out, but like not – it like it, it comes on occasionally, but it's not like completely always in the rotation. Also, like, I mean, Savage, non-remix, still very amazing. But also, I think – for me too, like the Bollywood music on lifting and exercising is insane. One, what? Because oh, interesting. I saw oh. I saw you retweet that video of the of that white dude dancing to Bollywood music the other day. Was uh, it yeah. was it B Fred? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Sorry. All right. So like my my thing with Bollywood music goes way back because I had a friend in high school and she danced to, you know, she did like, she danced to Bollywood music and like she did at the high school talent show. And I was just like, this song is fucking insane. And it's so high. Is she Indian so or was good. this a cultural appropriation situation? Like most things in Canada? No, no, she was, she was one of my really good friends. Her name was Antima Chakraborty and she moved to, she moved to this, she moved to Connecticut, not from India, but from some, from, I can't remember exactly where they moved. Ohio. From, but, yeah, I mean, they were somewhere else in the U.S., <laughs> but our talent show was, like, a lot of, like, screamo boys being like, oh, my yeah. dad! Yeah. 100 Gex! Gex! Gex yeah. did the show! <laughs> and it was just like, my money! My mom! <laughs> like, what? Stay, together for, stay, together, stay together for the kids type beat. Adam no, song. Bars. Adam song. It just, like, bars. And, like, dude, there was this one girl who was white man's like, plight. 100 a hundred things in the talent show. And it was just like, yeah, like we're here. And we're going to sing this song. <laughs> and like, I'm on my way. Like, I'm going to be like somebody. <laughs> where is and she like, now? That girl literally, literally like, has a podcast right now. Where, where is she now? Probably. I don't know, you know, but like, I will tell you, I'm obviously she's one of the hosts of call her daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's podcasting. That's what I'm trying to say. Dude, my brother and I, my brother and I talk about it all the time. But so in the middle of this talent show with like, you got these screamo boys and like McMansions and these like cover girl bands and these dance troops, fucking Antima comes out and she is just like, I'm going to do my shit. And she would dance to like Bollywood movie, like hits, like old school, like classic shit. And I would always just like, you know, we were friends and I'd be like, dude, what was that song? And this was, around the time of Napster, I would want to say. So you could find the songs and it's just like total hype music. And, you know, over the years, she shared some like Bollywood shit that I should listen to or movies I should watch. And I kind of just kept up with it. And dude, it's so fucking good. It puts you in the best mood. And like, if you watch those dance compilation videos, there's always a lot of Bollywood music in it. And it's all fucking insane. And it, it was crazy to me too because I was talking to a friend of mine who is Indian. Like after La La Land came out, and everyone was like, "The dancing, wow, <laughs> the dancing!" Like, did you see? Moves. I'm a, did you see? I'm a stone go like this, and like, did you see Ryan Gosling say of jazz? And I would be like, "Yeah." And then this one friend of mine was like, "Yeah, there's actually there's movies from Bollywood where they're literally dancing on like moving trains that are going at like full speed and sounds just really like da- yeah, it sounds cool. really dangerous. Wait, sounds do you, sick. Sounds like Bad Max. So you still dangerous and fucking awesome, man. Sounds like Bad Max. I love it. 
You still you still watch yeah. the movies though. I remember you, you you recommended one on your Twitter that was like Crazy Rich Asians but with Indian people. I think it's called Yes. Parakne, though. That movie was yes. fire. I watched it because you recommended it. It was so good, dude. No. Influence. Uh, Influence. I fucking yeah. love that movie, dude. So good. It's like okay, and so the 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 the, so, the very popular song from that movie, which I think is called Galangudian, and I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, is so fucking insane. Like, and so. Our treadmills at the gym have YouTube. So I have a playlist of these fucking songs and like other, like a treadmill playlist basically. But like, I remember this one dude walked up to me at the gym and he was like, you always have headphones on. He's like, what were you listening to? And I'm always like, oh, it's just like, um, it's like just Bollywood music, man. And he, he gave me this look. Fucking like, heavy wow, metal, bro. It's just, it's just the hardest heavy yeah. metal, bro. It's, it's, it's like, oh, my dad. Um, and it's just like, it's, it's, it's so, it's so good. It will put you in the best mood. And like, so that movie is insane. Bajro Mastani is, is of like newer Bollywood cinema is probably my favorite. And like Bollywood movies are also like, they're long. They're pro- like, they're full on productions too, right? But yeah, like you're, you're starting this and like, you're, you're at least, three and a half hours committed word and like it might oh, it's like this podcast yeah. it's like a podcast yeah it's like <laughs> yes, exactly. so it's prestige uh, it's prestige yeah. i mean yo lil wayne lil wayne said it best he said this that slumdog millionaire bollywood flow Ooh, yeah so, i mean slumdog is great but yes guys it's a lil wayne it's a little wayne joke i'm not tr- sham i can't see you because you're actually off my screen right now but i'm not trying to like fucking simplify or boil down bollywood culture down to a, w- a Wayne line, although a kind of M, because it is time to move on to yeah. the back half of this, which is what music are you not fucking with? You? That song is the theme song of Ballers. So and that's it's, it's Gas. It's Gas, featuring Drake. <laughs> yes. Yo, <laughs> big score. Who are not fucking with, musically? Drake? You're not listening to Little Uzi Vert. Did you, listen to, did you listen to Dark Lane demos? Did you listen to New Drake? Uh, what do you I think of the Tootsie Slide? What do you think of the Tootsie Slide? You must see that a lot on TikTok. Damn. I'm at, I'm at a loss, man. I mean, like, I, I fuck with Drake. Even, I have no idea that? what you're talking about, though. Oh, uh, Alex just ran by. Even being on TikTok? Yeah, Alex is getting our dinner. It's here. Well, you're going to be cold by the time. What, what'd you get? What, hours, what'd you bro? get? Dinner check. Okay. What we get? We got the diner. I mean, I fuck with... Ooh. I fuck... I still fuck with old school Drake. I haven't listened to anything. I haven't listened to any Drake Thank since you. I saw his Thank house. You. Another fellow old school Drake appreciative yeah. man. Um, you you when, saw the cheese was- factory he lived in, and you blacklisted him. Dude, I was. I felt like there was. Dude, all right, I think uh, it's good. Sorry, what? Sorry He's for crazy. partying. <laughs> oh my god, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have Miracle, no I mean, like, I'm kidding, bro. Sure. It's, tough for me to, it's tough for me to have an actual informed opinion about this, but I will fuck with old school Drake forever. Like meaning, on, meaning like, like meaning like rappy rapidy rap Drake. What what's your favorite like Drake tape or do not really listen like that? I don't know. I don't really listen like that, but I will say, dude, like what was the album? What was the so far gone? So far gone. Best I ever yes. had. Yeah, like if that shit comes on on my shuffle. Like if old Drake comes on on my shuffle, I will. I will stop. I will pause. I will listen to it. It's still so good. So later, it also reminds yeah. me of like that very specific time in my life, which Ooh. like How is I that? don't know if people dark. I mean, it reminds me of like I mean, this is a reference. I don't know if everyone will get, but it's like it's like Carson Street shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like shit. when we're all just sitting there and the like boys, all, yeah, <laughs> the boys, and we're fucking stupid, but we're also dumb on drugs and. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will fuck with that. I mean, what else am I not fucking with? Uh, I don't know. I mean, throw some shit out there. I only I only listen to music that I fuck with, so it's hard for me not to fuck with music that's, that that's I listen fair. to. You that's know fair. what I'm saying? All right, let's move on to the next thing, which is a very important topic for quarantine, which is film and TV. We already talked about your love for Bollywood, but what film and TV are you currently fucking with? Are you currently binging? Let's hear it. Your news. All right. So, did you guys watch Normal People? No. I'm too. I'm too horny. Like, I'm. I'm scared. I don't want to fucking bust it out of my. I want to read the book first. <laughs> Chuck, you're not reading the book, dog. Isn't it a book? 
Yeah. It is Sally, Sally, Rooney, Sally Rooney. Yes, Sally yes, Rooney. The, the, All the right. owner of the the owner of the New York Football Giants. It's like the official book of people with glasses. That's the on Mars, the subway. bro. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is a subway book. I would say. All right, so we watched I, it. <laughs> what do you think, Chuck? What do you have to share? Sorry, sorry. No, I just remember I was on I was on the J train once and I saw like this guy go up to this girl and he was like, Oh, like you're eating, uh, you know, <laughs> like, Oh, like, I read it too. Like it was, it was the dumbest, most like, it was um, a bit cute. Did you say what up to James when you saw that? <laughs> <laughs> I almost treated about it straight up, but I was what like, I oh, see what I, what I used to do is I used to have a backpack full of like the hype books at the time that I knew like uh, women be reading. Um, and I <laughs> pull one out and I'd be like, Oh, Sally Rudy. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> like, Oh God. The feminine mystique. My, is that mine? I dropped it. I'm so sorry. Every, <laughs> book, every book that Jenna Blackwell is reading. That's crazy. Oh, my God. You're reading it, too? Do you follow James, Jenna James Blackwell would, on Goodreads? I love it. I love James, it. Would, I don't, James I don't would be the guy on the subway with two books at one time. That's, that's exactly, <laughs> Double fisting? Chuck, that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. I would have a backpack full of like the hype books that like women were into and be like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm reading this, too. You, you're telling me that James yeah. Harris is going to be in public parallel pathing feminist literature? <laughs> Oh Shot yeah, I, I love I love Otassi Onassis or whatever her name is. Um, Holes. I like I like to switch cars on the train, and then when I get to the new car, just throw a copy of Infinite Jest to the <laughs> other end and be like, "Excuse me, so sorry." So That's sorry. assault, gotta, brother. Gotta, gotta, get <laughs> gotta get through. Gotta coming through. I did see. I was I was I was in some place recently, and I saw like a live hard copy of Infinite Jest, and my mind just fucking exploded. But hard um, copy. W- like a like a book. Yeah, uh, how much it was did that weigh? That a book writer made. <laughs> how much huh? did it weigh? I've only ever seen soft cover. Dude, she thick. I mean, it's a big. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not hard cover. I meant hard mm-hmm. copy as in like a physical non ebook. Oh, you see that all the time. That's such a trope. Like a fucking. I don't know. I know, but when you see it, it just it speaks volumes. Literally and figuratively, yeah. That you're all right, Janusi, let, wow, let, let's, let's, stop, let's stop talking books because most of our audience is illiterate. Um, what film and TV besides? So you're fucking with normal people. Yeah, how, I, we like normal people. How cool. horny? How horny do you guys get watching it? It's pretty. It's a pretty horny show. I will say, like the sex scenes are very, like, and I'm speaking in this from a sense of like, like being like a like a documentarian of like the human experience or whatever it's very good and like <laughs> very real sick like there's whole moments where you're just like oh yeah like i we I've been i've been there man like i've done that <laughs> and it's not like Sex? you're not like oh this ship will sink but let me let me paint let me did you guys hear that? That's the glass, the hand on the glass. Right, right, right. That was automobile. You know, you've never had sex inside of a Model T on a sinking ship, is what you're saying, or whatever. The no, right. <laughs> but I um, will. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. What else are you fucking with? What else are you are you binging on? Um, I what else have we binged on lately? I don't know. If, I mean, we haven't been binging on Insecure, but I've really liked Insecure this season. Very good. Um, the last episode especially was. Alex just screamed, screamed at me something. Um, she's, she's, tra- she's trying to, she's trying to say it's not TV, it's HBO. How's um Asian Bay? How's Asian Bay on Insecure? Asian Bay on Insecure. Are you talking about Molly's boyfriend? Isn't he known as Asian Bay on Twitter? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. But there's that whole relationship. Wait, John, you don't use Black Twitter. <laughs> All right, I'm what? <laughs> okay. All right, John. What? What about? What about? Let's. Let's. let's you should. It's the best. You should tap in, into, dude. Yeah. Let's no, go. Black Twitter is absolute. All right. So when I worked at Twitter, that was absolutely acknowledged yeah. very much really? as the best part of Twitter. Also, it's a monolith of, of comedy, bro. Ninety-nine to hundred percent of culture. meme culture and comedy yep. comes oh, from it's the Black source. Twitter. It's the source. Without Black Twitter, nothing is funny or cool. Yeah, well, there, there was some like T-shirt where it's like uh, culture is um, black Twitter. White white people stealing from gay culture, which is stealing from black female culture, which is huh? Yeah, yeah. I feel like Alana Glazer wore that shirt on yes. Broad City. 
Yes, that's what it is. That's what that's and that's Which, how I get my culture. Yes. Speaking of television that I love to binge, I've been rewatching Broad City because it's like it's such a like obviously it's hysterical, but it's also it holds up and it's also like it's such a reminder of what like New York City is. Oh, in, like, I miss a lot of York. ways. <laughs> not like not like I miss it. <laughs> Are like, you serious? <laughs> fucking like twenty four year olds be like, New York has changed. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it has changed a lot. This but, like, Chase Bank used to be a Dwayne Reed. Day? Yeah, I'm like, I met the Cobra Snake right before, here. Like, yeah, like I could say New York has changed, but I Dove Charney sexually assaulted me on that corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would have been L.A. Right? New York has changed. I'm oh, sorry, I'm thinking like, of Barry Richardson. Um, New York has about- changed for those people since Forever Twenty One went out of business, and they can't go to Union Square to get a fucking going out top. Hell yeah. Yeah. What about uh oh, what yeah. about Zuvies, John? Are you are you big into Zuvies? What Zuvies are you fucking with? Um uh, I'm trying to think of anything new that has come out that we've been really like into, but nothing's I, immediately coming to mind as I mean, like, you can't really, new releases. You can't there's not that many like new releases, right? Right. I mean I think there's a new Beanie Feldstein movie, mm. Building a Girl, that looks good. We're gonna watch. We were gonna watch it earlier this week, but we were like, we're too tired and we're gonna pass out. The trailer looks um, good. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I had no idea what it was, and then Alex she, was like, oh, we should watch it. She fucking crushed Booksmart. Oh, like, all right. I mean, if we're gonna talk about Zuvies, we fuck with. I will say, Booksmart was robbed of a lot of things during award season. You think really? it was that good? Too. Yes, I absolutely do. Also, one of my favorite top, I would say top five favorite movie scenes of all time is from Booksmart. Do you remember when she dives into the pool and she's like, I'm going to hook up with this girl. Like, I'm at a high school party. I'm cool. This is all happening. We're all jumping. Like, everyone's yeah. naked. The John Genuzzi and- story, a memoir. <laughs> yes, fucking yes. And dude, and like the song and it's in slow motion and there's all these like disembodied, like beautiful people. And then, you know, obviously there's like the moment that happens that I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, but no spoilers. The movie, yeah. the movie came out only last year. So that's fair game. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Booksmart is truly hilarious. Holds up watch after watch. And that scene in particular is very well like choreographed from like a cinema perspective and also like an actual like emotion perspective. Um, James, did you like Booksmart? I really like Beanie's performance. I did not like it as an overall movie. I felt like it was too like it was like a collection of like individual scenes. It didn't really like. Mm. It was like, all right, we're at the party. Oh, we're at the library. Oh, like we're it's, over here now. It's like just super know. bad. It's the same exact movie. But what I would say is that if Lady Bird is good enough to get nominated, then Booksmart is different. Different, like- different movies. Different different kinds no. of movies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, Chef. Right, because it's Lady Bird. I understand. You it's have a good a- Lady Bird. Fucking rules, man. <laughs> it's not the best movie of all time. It's all right, guys, guys, movie. guys. Let's settle down. Let's settle down. The the yeah. the, the solution here is that the next real super bad should have won Best Picture. Is what I'm trying to say. Say. Correct, but the next for real for real is Surf Ninjas led by me, and then after that it's a Lady Bird led by Chef. Yes, that Dude, is a fact. Fucking Surf Ninjas, John, you, so you good. Can, you can guest, you can make a guest appearance on the Surf Ninjas for real for real Zoom, and yeah. we can just go line for yeah. line. But it will it'll only cost you twenty dollars. We got to be the biggest tier on. It's Patreon. also it's one of those things like you can make you can make an acute reference to Surf Ninjas, and if someone picks it up, you're instantly like, all right, like you're in it, like it's done, like your friendship. It's like it's like if you're in The Sims, it's not like your relationship goes like double plus like a hundred times. You know, John, what I'm saying? I live I live my life by two truths and two truths only: uh, money can't buy knives, and brothers don't surf. Okay. Wait, what? That that's quote different. made no sense. Money can't buy knives and brothers don't surf. That? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I know. I get I get part of that. Wait, what am I tripping? Yeah. Uh, that's the quote from the movie. You... It's two separate quotes. Anyway, no. what film and TV are I you not seen fucking with? 20 years. What film and TV are you not fucking with, Jonathan? Oh, uh, uh, my name's not Jonathan. Really? Is it just, it's Sorry. just Sorry. Yeah, it's just straight up J O H N. 
And one time I had an altercation with a band teacher in middle school because she called me Jonathan and I got really pissed. But, uh, you know, I, lo- I love whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, not, not quite my tempo. Not my tempo. Um, not quite it. And quite. all right. So movies we're not fucking with. So in terms of new stuff, I was really stoked for the new Emma movie because I, I fuck with period pieces very much. I like period pieces. We watched it and I was not, I was not as over the moon about it as I thought I was. It's very much like, was this with, oh, um, uh, on Anya? Is that her name? I, I don't remember. I don't remember who like the lead was Anya, Bill, Taylor, Anya Taylor joy or some shit. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And the, the guy, like, her, the dad was Bill Nye. Bill Nye? <laughs> the science guy? Bill Nye, the science guy. The or guy no. from Love Actually that played, like, the rock song or whatever. But nope. it was one of those things. It was like, we rented it. We were really stoked. Um, and it's just, like, you know, the big climax was, like, this mild defense that somebody made. And I was like, eh, I don't know, like... I don't know. Maybe we can watch Independence Day or something. Hell yeah, that movie slaps. Yeah, the the OG or the new shit. There's new no, shit. I haven't. I didn't even see the new shit. It's the OG. Also, the OG is extremely relevant right now because fucking what's his Goldblum is like. I I know what's happening. You got to listen to me, right. and it feels relevant. It feels relevant, and no one was listening to him. One of when the, the when the White House blows up. Oh, fire. Yeah. One and of the, the, uh, the helicopter and the fire, the helicopter's here and the fire's like right there. And they're like, we're just moving. We're going. <laughs> one of the, uh, probably like one of the most, the, one of the articles that I was most proud of writing while at Complex was I did an oral history of the president's speech in Independence Day. I got to speak to Bill Pullman, uh, Vivica A. Fox, um, could not get Randy Quaid on the phone, but that was actually like, Again, one of these obscure things that you're so obsessed with, and you're, you get an opportunity, yeah. and you're just like, I'm, I'm running with it. Um, and I got like full. Did you I got talk like, to Will Smith. You're muted, Lawrence. Did not talk to Will Smith. Talked to uh, Dean something, like the one of the writers. Dean Blunt. <laughs> Dean Blunt. Uh, <laughs> Black yeah, exactly. Such a good speech. Um, like he's got the he's got the walkie talkie in his hand, yeah. and he's like, Good he's morning. Not, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Good morning. Uh, no, Independence what... Day. Wait, James, this Fuck is the movie, this this is the article you're most proud of writing, not the 15 hottest women in fashion who work in fashion professionally. What was that thing? That was not me. I feel like that was a Nick Grant article. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that? What was the actual headline? Oh, it was a uh, 40 hottest women in tech. But no, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, it was an L, dude. That was uh yeah, that was regrettable. Hand up. That was written by the uh or edited by the later editor in chief of Complex, E. Scott. All right. Um, what about respect? Media- real journalism, baby. What about media publications, Genuzi? What what do you like? What's your media diet these days? Well, I mean, I feel like this week, I, GQ does deserve a shout out. That Robert Pattinson thing was insane. And I thought do you it think? Was very good. Do you think? Do you think our patch was like putting, like playing up the shtick? Like, I feel like he was kind of like, duh. Have you seen the lighthouse? Right? This man knows how to nail it, bro. I'm saying, yeah. like, I think he was kind of like really playing it up, like the whole, like, oh, I don't know if this is an oven or a microwave. Come on, you're 34 years old. You know what a fucking microwave looks like? I think he's already one of the boats. The, yeah, the go on. The best the of all time. <laughs> Based off of like what exa- what is your favorite shit? Good time, the lighthouse. Good time, bro. Lighthouse. Name both of those. Those are one yeah. two punch. But that's just dude. He is. It's over after I that. Think, but he's not fucking Pacino. I, almost. <laughs> give him. Give him one more. Give him Batman. He, he needs his know. own great ass. Yeah. That's what Pattinson needs. That <laughs> moment, and then he'll be in the pantheon. Wait, Lawrence, what's the moment? <laughs> great ass. <laughs> but I will that say, sound good, Chef. Sh- sh- that sound good. Phenomenal. Oh, uh, he said no. He said thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> but like that cover to do that with him, that was like the perfect choice. And like, yeah, he was probably playing it up for the camera and everything or whatever. But I thought it was so good. And it made a very big statement about it. It was just like, all right, you're looking you're looking at magazines and what they're doing now in this time where like production value is actual productions are hard to do. 
you have some magazines that are just like, let's put an illustration here. And then you have some magazines that are just like, fuck it. Let's get this fucking like lighthouse, like mermaid dude and just let him go nuts. And I think it totally paid off for them. Um, and I thought that was good. And like, honestly, like their coverage of late, like this era of GQ, I fuck with very much so in a lot of ways. It was also, um, it was very I surprising. Hope, I hope we'll all see this game. Yeah, it was also very surprising that like GQ, they were one of the first like, definitely major magazines to to kind of lean into like quarantine like uh like selfie you know the the subjects yes. creating their own shit like you, you see like artsy artsy fartsy magazines doing that but then like gq to do that and to like do a cover that was shot by a, uh uh you know the cover star albeit it's fucking our pats and he you know probably has like the ill like a yeah, he probably like has a fucking credit in film school or whatever um but right. that, yeah true that was impressive but also, and like, I mean, I mean, the, and then there's Rachel, Rachel Tasha, like Rachel Trash Can G and DeLeon is the full yeah. name. Is, are you are you talking about one of are you talking about one of the co-hosts of Corporate Dunce? I can't. I've never listened. I can't talk about that. But <laughs> I mean, same bro. I am yeah. yeah. You and me both, brother. I do. I can't. <laughs> I. I mean, I. I <laughs> I, I'm not even, I can't even make a coherent noise at this point, but <laughs> I will fuck with Rachel from Dust Till Dawn. I think one of the smartest writers out there right now. And I'll also say, okay, so yes, our Pat's cover, great, cool. Change the game. Obviously love it. Rachel, po- Rachel had a story today with Julia Fox from Uncut Gems. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we saw, we saw the pristine dumper. Don't even, don't even trip. Yes. But like, from a I love to play that cello. <laughs> <laughs> what she's got the cello tattoos. Come on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I we mean, get it. It's just so it's just so so offensive, James. I know, I know. It's a G, it's a G clef. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, one obviously you fuck with Julia Fox. Obviously, fuck. I, I mean, everyone should be fucking with Rachel. I th- I think one of the smartest writers out there today, and like. I cannot even imagine where she's going to end up in like 20 years from now. It's going to be insane. That's high praise but, coming from a book writer, you know, that's high dude, praise. I mean, I, I mean, do you remember, do you remember her Tumblr back in the day? Of course. Pizza rules, mm-hmm. like the humor, the wit, the sarc, all perfect, but also like Richie Shazam, the photographer and like the way they pulled that off with just being like, we're going to go out in these streets in the middle of the fucking night and go into the subway. I thought was dope. Um, but did she, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, about, I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit her, but what did she like edit that? Like, was that her, like uh, her general idea or was, did she kind of like the intro and the outro? Cause like, yes, I agree. It was a great story. And I know Julia and Richie are like BFFs. Um, so I guess that's my question is like, who, who actually kind of, you know, whose brain did that actually spring from? Who cares? It's good. Right. That, yeah. Sure, I mean, don't give that, him any in terms, in terms of like the deep process, I don't know. I mean, Rachel's got the byline and she's got the, the words. Um, I don't know how it came about though. I mean, like also Richie Shazam in general, like very interesting person to follow. And like, I heard he, uh, I heard, I heard he stiff armed Sam Hyde at the Tom Brown football game. Damn. Oh my put, gosh. Put, put, Sam, put the, put the wafish twink on his ass. Yep. Damn, he, he, he pancaked him. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Tom little, Brown, I heard a little. Tom Brown bird also game. broke a, his ankles, bro. <laughs> what a fucking moment! Do you think there was any chrome hearts at the Tom Brown football? football Absolutely game? not. That'll be off brand. Yeah, I think. Was, I think it was fucking TV yeah. head to toe. Um, Maybe in the green room, the trailer for Lil Uzi mm-hmm. Vert, for Lil right. Jacuzzi Vertical. What other? Yeah, what, else, no, what no. else are you reading, Januzzi? Like, what else is on your fucking media diet? The Bible. Uh, uh, <laughs> a good book. Um, a good book? Um, no, the, the, the good book. Have you accepted oh, Jesus Christ as your the, Lord and Savior, Jonathan Genuzzi? The book of the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't no, seen God is ass. I'm kidding. What else are you reading? What else? Uh, um, I mean, I read the cut very much like sex diaries are back in a very big way. They have been for a while. But aren't but they sort of like in, during quarantine, aren't they like, oh, and then I sexted my boss and I sexted my intern. Like they're not like. There's no sex. Sexting diaries. 
Yeah, but there was one today that was like a woman was like almost caught for like sneaking out to like meet her boyfriend. I mean, the cut in general, I really like. I think it's a good source of like pop culture news. And I, like the takes are always kind of like the takes that I'm aligned with personally. Yeah, we fuck um, with the cut. <laughs> oh, I fuck with certain parts of... I feel like... I, I mean, this sounds too fucking stupid because to be like GQ and Vogue... Because I feel like, you know, it's just, it's so, it's such an easy option. But there are certain bylines on Vogue.com that are so good. Shout them out. Let's give them their praise. Yeah. All right. Go off, All right. So Emma Spector on Vogue.com, who is legit, like, on Twitter, an incredible follow. And just, like, if there's meme content, she will know about it. And then not Vogue.com. I'm also going to shout out Madison Malone Kircher who is sort of like the New York mag. I mean, New York mag in general, like right. the whole atmosphere I will fuck with. Um, and then also, all right. So Hamish, Hamish Bowles on Vogue.com. That dude is a, like, if you want to learn about like a world of like luxury and just like pure, like, like extravagance. I mean, his, like his that, name alone, Hamish Bowles. Yeah. Come on. I mean, like, so he's, he's actually, and he's in a, he's a very interesting person. Obviously I am also very interested to read the Andre Leon Talley memoirs that are, I think the they sh- came out. The Chiffron Trenches. Yes. Like, I want to know all of that shit. I want to know everything that's going on there. But I like, I heard it's kind of sad. Like he like, like, it's unintentionally sad because he's celebrating a time that is well gone by, but it's like, it's like somebody like always talking about like their glory days in high school. Right. Where like the jock yeah. always being like, Oh, well I, I fucking, I, we got to state and I get passed for the touchdown. And it's like, yeah, but that was like a while ago. And that, and then like a lot of shit has happened since then. And yes, like his beef with Anna and like Carl right. And everything is supposed to be like fucking very juicy gossip, but I feel like I don't know. I I I, was, I definitely want to order the book and read it, um, but that's just kind of like the reviews that I've been reading. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I've read. I mean, I've I've read a lot of the reviews, and like, I think I think it will be sad from a point because like, I think anyone too who's kind of like been around and like watching the space has seen sort of like. And not necessarily, I, I don't know if writing on the walls or writing on the wall is the, the right phrase for that. But like, you've, we've kind of been able to see like him go from one point to another in real yeah. time. Um, well, I think, I, I think, think the point is, the point that I forgot to mention is I think the saddest part is like the racism that is so prevalent then is still so prevalent now. And yeah. like the things that he had to overcome and face are still in place now. Um, and it's, so it's not really a story of triumph. It's really just kind of like him like surpassing or like excelling and then like being kind of like dragged down again. Yeah. I mean, he, I, it's so interesting too, to think about like all of like the, the like big personalities in this whole world. Cause he is obviously, he's, he's one of the biggest. And I think that like, I've had, I mean, I've, I've, been in the same room as him before and it's just sort of like he's like a real force to be near and around a force of nature see- truly yes yeah exactly he he made fun of me once it was really interesting wait um, wait what was the roast what did he say yeah. yeah yeah so we were well, Terry, you, oh, you, male, you male ass cracker ass <laughs> this is all right so this is this is legitimately one of the one of the most memorable experiences of my whole existence. All right. And like, once you figure out what the, once I tell you what this is, you're going to be like, okay, cool, whatever, fine. But Valentino, like actual Valentino, like Mr. Valentino, like Valentino Garavani, he wrote a book about entertaining, like hosting a party basically. (laughs) And he had this like, gathering at his house here in the city for like 15 people and i it was a conversation between him and andre and i was invited and i why lost 
Well, this was this was when I was like lucky. And no, no, this is I, this is when I was at GQ, and I got invited, and I lost my fucking Sick. shit because Valentino alone, the last emperor, baby. Yes, absolutely, legend, incredible. Had seen him once. I saw, dude. I saw him at a fucking Jack Spade store. Like the shot. He was just the shopping. Hell? The fuck? Yeah, he wanted to buy a powder blue blazer for Fire. Jack Spade, and Fire. I, I remember my mind fucking exploding because, like, why is he here? Did you but, say hi when you saw him in the store, or do you? you Job cool? bat- no, battle. I pissed my pants <laughs> and I fucking went home, man. Damn. But and Valentino was so, like, "Yo, did that guy just piss his pants and run out of the store crying? That was weird." <laughs> no, I pissed enough so it all was one color. <laughs> it, you know, it took a while. He was hydrated. But, Why do you smell like piss? You look great, but. <laughs> um, but so they had this event. We went to the house and it was this conversation between him and Andre, but entertaining. And like, I, Andre, Andre was like, there was a point where they we were, like, we were all talking and asking questions. And I, this is funny because I wasn't wearing socks at the time. And both Valentino and Andre roasted me because Valentino said something about how like he adore, like it's just a part of his nature that he loves beautiful things and he loves beauty. And I started smiling and laughing because I also take an appreciation Who of doesn't? things Who and doesn't? all of this shit. And he was like, Valentino was like, you laugh, but it's true. And I was I was laughing because I was like, yes, it is true. You made it sound like Count Chocula. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three beauties. <laughs> Beautiful thing. But he was like, you That's laugh at me. from but Sesame it, Street, it, but yeah. But he was like, you laugh. But to me, beauty is everything. And it was all Winter, stuff. Transylvania. Like, <laughs> but, and then Andre, Andre was like, where, Andre asked me straight up, where are you from? And I told him like, that I was, at, you know, at the time, I was like, I'm from GQ. And he was like, I bet you are or something with your Ooh. suit and your sockless shoes. And oh. I was just like, oh, God ah. yes. were you were you suspended? Yes. Were you suspended in midair jumping in a suit? Yeah, I was, yeah. It was super tight. Like my thighs bursting. You're like, no, I, you're like, Andre, here's the thing. This, this suit can go from the boardroom to the bar. Somebody, anybody get me a trampoline and Peggy Sirota stat. Fuck you. No, John, this is what's crazy is you got roasted so hard by the fucking goat that you by literally, to prove, him wrong, to prove him wrong, you had to write a book about fucking socks. Do you not see that? This is psychology 101, baby. Yeah. yeah. Also, well, you know, I, it, I, I just want to quickly point out, uh, Chuck has, is on full slump. He's a... Uh... Yo, my man is obtuse right I'm, now. I'm here. What are you talking about? I'm here. Yo, my man, man, man in all you're also at like, 180 degree angle, bro. He's, a, he's, like, a, he's at 150. He's at 150 bro. right now. What sucks so much about that is that, like, I, I take, I saw Andre also in conversation with the guy who directed The Last Emperor, the actual documentary. Like, I went to, like, a film screening of it. And, like, I respect Andre so much and I admire him for so many reasons. And for... I mean, like, for me, for him to, like, think that I wasn't taking him seriously or I didn't appreciate him or, like, Laughing all of these things. With. Right. Like, it was a weird dynamic because, like, I, like, and even, like, you can you can throw Hamish Bowles into this, too. It's just, like, I respect those guys so much for being so, like, unforgivably dedicated to what they love that it just, like, it's it's so admirable to me. And, like, like Hamish Bowles has like a collection of like old school like couture clothing like and he knows shit like he knows the names of mannequins from like the Dior Atelier from like the like when it first started and he would be like yeah I was in like this crazy store and I oh. saw this dress that had the name Lucky on it and he was like I knew the name Lucky was the code name of a mannequin from the Atelier at Dior so I knew this was a first edition sample, and it's just like it blows. Your name, your well, this is mind. why they're. This is why you've named three goats. These are the warriors of tastefulness, bro. These are like these are the yes. guys. 
They're the last dude. They are the last line of watch. defense between heathens and and fucking high society. Taste this is just what it is, man. Protect these guys at all costs. Somebody give Andre Leon Talley a fucking job, bro. Yeah, dude. And when I was working at that restaurant where like the guy Maybe told me to James? go check out Chrome to Chrome Heart, we did lost James. James. Uh, he said that his uh, his computer just crashed. Oh no. Oh shit. Yeah. Let's keep that going, bad. Dude. Is the pod can, that bad? But we rec- we're still recording. I can go without James. Yo, Januzzi, my dude. Let's keep it running along. Honestly, this is the show I've always wanted to do. This is the dream right. scenario for me. Yeah. Okay. So listen, honestly, at this point now with fuck with, not fuck with, right? We're ready to move on to your quarantine sanity activities. Obviously, you love working out. You love staying active. What are you doing to keep yourself safe and sane, John? All right. So I am keeping up exercise as much as I can. I used to go on sanity walks every morning and I keep a crazy schedule. Like I used to, I like under normal circumstances, I wake up at four 30 and when court, when quarantine That's crazy started, early, I would, bro, four 30. Yeah. What yeah. time do you go to bed? Like nine 30 or 10 or nine 30 or 10 30. I'm like in the usual circumstances, but Obviously, we're in unusual circumstances right now. So, has that been your whole um, life? You always wake up super early, or is that a recent, or like an, as you've been a, like a, an adult? What's the deal there? It's it's more of an adult thing. It's basically been since I've been an adult, and like since you've been I buff, keep, I, since you've been buff, or since you've been an adult. Since since I've been an adult, and like okay. I keep that early morning time. I mean, now obviously exercising is a part of it. But um, I also keep a part of that morning time for like my own like shit that I want to work on, like creative shit, like writing or like and sometimes sometimes it's honestly just like I'm going to browse Reddit for two hours because sure. like, I can't do anything else right now. But um, so exercise has been keeping me a lot sane. I used to take the sanity walks, but now I'm sleeping in a little bit more. Um, you deserve it. So I wake up. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. But so now I wake up. I work out um, and then I have like a normal work day, you know, normal work hours um, from home, which is tough because I don't really leave the apartment very much. Um, sure. What's your um, average? Uh, what's your average like per week? How many times leaving the apartment? Once. Same. Like straight up uh, once over the weekend to get groceries. Um, and then after work hours, it's a lot of Final Fantasy VII remake. Ooh, game, real gamer. Hours. Are you a You're are a you a gamer. fucking gamer? I wouldn't say I'm a gamer, but I am very loyal to certain games. And I played Final I played Final Fantasy VII growing up. Um, PC version. Mm. I would so, say oh, when I was like a gamer, you're just a fucking dork. Yeah, yeah, totally. Got it. Yeah, right. not a gamer. I wouldn't say gamer. I would a dork is much more appropriate. But there we go. You know, I played the re- I got a PlayStation right before lockdown because I knew this was coming out and I knew I wanted to play it. And it came just before, like, basically everything went to shit. And then Final Fantasy came out and I played it through on regular mode. I played it through on hard mode. And now I'm just replaying all it. Pro, all pro, all Madden. You played it on all Madden mode? <laughs> yeah. And it's sad and weird, but you know, there's an hour count in the game when you save. Whoa, we got double James. We got two Jameses. All right, so listen. I, I know that everyone at home knows that the podcast is going so smoothly because it sounds so good, but there's actually mayhem. We now have two James. You've cloned yourself. What? Bro. I cannot be stopped. Um, <laughs> I, apolog- I apologize for my shitty... I don't know what's happening, but... keep. Lawrence, keep it going. Keep it going, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, John, what about – so you talked about writing too. Do you journal? You big journaler? No, I don't journal. I mean, I feel like too like with Twitter, it's just like – it's essentially a journal just in real time. Sure. Um, I've thought about it. And like there's a lot of writing that I want to do. Like I have been – I have – I have a novel that I'm like halfway through. Halfway? Not writing. That's pretty good. Not, yeah, not like writing the full novel, but like the plot outline and like mm. the chapter summaries. Um, okay. And then, you know, obviously I have the book coming out and like, that's a big deal for me, but it's sort of like, it's interesting because like having the book come out, I'm realizing too that like how much I miss 
just writing from like a creative standpoint and being able to be like, oh, like this is my space to just like write whatever the fuck I want, which like I think for most people these days is like Twitter and Instagram. Like you can just say whatever shit you want to say. Of course. Um, and that, I mean, it, Twitter is honestly like a huge stress reliever for me. I'm like, I've gotten to a state now where like I'll post a lot of shit and delete it like 30 seconds later. Cause I just, oh, need to, I love that. Like, dude. I love that. Yeah. Just like get it out of my, what system. are your standards? I do. If it doesn't get a hundred faves, I delete. That's Lux, man. All right, I'm back I don't, because I don't I, have that. I'm, I'm I'm back because I I left right as uh, Lauren started asking about journaling. Wait, James, um, so no, this is um, good. this is no. We actually want to. We're we're in the middle of the discussion, so you tweet a lot of terrible shit that is trash. Like, do you keep everything up or do you delete stuff if it doesn't perform? You asking me? You, yes, James, yeah. you. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, I've probably, I, I would, I want to say that I've only, I've only deleted like probably like half a dozen tweets in my life. Just the um, racist ones. Yes. And the ones that use the word gay. Um, just because I think that, I <laughs> think that also is bad. never said that. Uh, also never said gay, um, on Twitter, but I think that, uh, deleting tweets is a sign of weakness. Um, mm. I get it. For John, oh, I get okay. it. If, like it's a, it's a, like you're venting, and you're like, look, I just got to get this out there and immediately delete it. But when Lawrence is like, yeah, I didn't get a hundred likes, I'm pulling it down. Like that is some fucking cowardly shit, in my opinion. No, it's just I want, I only want the best shit, dude. I just care about the brand, bro. The curation. Yeah. People, sir. Sure. People expect um, that because they it's expect like, a lot from us, man. Yeah, and if you put shit out there and no one's responding, you're kind of like, eh, I, 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 I don't know. It's a weird. It's a let weird. It, but let it be a record of like your mental, your mental process. I don't know. Not when I'm smoking weed trying to come up with dumb jokes. I guess. Um, Dude, yeah, and too, and also like, are we, are we on quarantine sanity activities? That's, like, that's, that's what we're talking about, bro. Why do you think we brought up journaling? You are not. You're out of this. This is my podcast, man. You're done. You're fired. Wait, Lawrence, you do the running show. I'll I'll fucking chill and, and uh, you know. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. God white, damn, white privilege bombs, John. So, are right, there any right. kind of quarantine activities that you've seen, like trends? Are you like this is corny, like baking or people getting really into cooking? Is there anything and, that you're and, like? And here, and here's what I'll, here's what I'll say, John. Here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. My my opinion because i'm playing the role of lawrence uh before you answer the question i'm gonna a repeat james question and then b tell you what i'm doing no just kidding um yeah tell us what you're doing no dude this is good keep going bro i like this <laughs> like two means now I, I mean, i'm cloned i've been cloned <laughs> i mean honestly like All you're right. talking about uh, how i'm on my fucking allison roman chrissy <laughs> teigen shit but to me it's like yo chefing up plates is the new building a fit it's like yo here's the ingredients yeah. i got here's what i'm in the mood for Here's what I what I think the possibilities are and the permutations are. Let's are you freestyling though? Are you freestyling off the dome? Are you that nice with the sticks? Throwing plates is a new throwing fist. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, bro. John, what about so speaking of food, John, what do you what do you you, you got takeout tonight? Yeah, what are you what are you chomping on right delivery? now? We did get to that tonight. We got um we got diner delivery tonight. It's just um a cheeseburger and tater tots. But we've been cooking wait, diner, a lot. diner, diner from Williamsburg Diner? No, it's no, no, no. It's this is from um, what right? is it called? It's called the kitchen sink. Oh, okay. It, yeah, it's in um. It used to be called the Moonstruck Diner. Do you guys remember Ooh, that? Yeah, they yeah, recently, yeah, yeah, they recently yeah. changed it or something, right? This is yeah. It was like that. Yeah, and uh, they changed over to um. What is it called now? I just said it. I can't even remember. But um, we get it every kitchen now sink. and then. It's sort of like kitchen sink. Yeah, it's one of our like kind of mainstay order places we order from um but we have been cooking a lot we've been ordering a lot too from golden diner which is very good um the thai spot yeah and is it thai? thai right i think so i mean i'm not sure i mean we they actually they popped up on like all of the delivery services very recently i don't think they were on there before but you know we also learned like so we ordered from a place um a couple of nights ago and obviously, like, for anyone that's listening that's ordering delivery in a big city, like, we got a note in our order from Seamless that was basically like, please do not order via Seamless and order order either oh, via shit. phone wow. or website. Lit. Because these delivery websites, they take an insane amount like 30%. of money from the restaurant. Yeah, it's so much, right? Like more than 30%. And here in the city, 
they passed some regulations, I think just today, they were like the delivery services can charge a maximum of up to 15%, I think, which still like, if you're thinking like, I'm going to order dinner from a restaurant and like you go, you do like the tip or whatever, you assume that the restaurant is getting most of that, even 15%, which is like a huge deduction from what they normally get still right. seems so fucking high. This so, was not, not to, not to talk about ourselves because we're, we're going to talk about that in uh, the first section of part two, but <coughs> this was actually a huge contentious point at our former employer barstool. Yeah. This is what sparked the whole beef. Sparked the whole beef where someone was like, yo, this food truck is giving, is complaining about having to give 30% of their, uh, in Chicago, gross proceeds to Grubhub, and then Barstool was like, "Fuck you, Grubhub's w- whatever." It's a it's a, a whole sponsor. Thing. Yeah, it was this idea of like, "Yo, can you criticize Grubhub when Grubhub is like the a, a big sponsor right now?" There's not many sponsors out in these fucking COVID streets. But what, Grubhub yeah. apparently is eating still. No. Pun so what, what you what you should do is you should call the restaurant yeah. directly, and a lot of restaurants are now setting up their own. Um, right. like, yep. order, like online order systems because to, to kind of forego, you know, seamless Grubhub, DoorDash, uh, all the, all them shits. Well, yeah. fuck them. There was this, there's this, you know, do you guys follow Ashwin on Twitter? The guy, the Williamsburg pizza guy? No. That's no, I follow him he, on right, so, IG. But like he posted today that like after this regulation passed, he was like, this will save Williamsburg pizza, like hundreds of thousands of dollars in the <laughs> annual. There was also that receipt. There was a receipt going on from a pizza place in Chicago that was just like they built so much in delivery and orders. And it's just like, oh, this is great when you see like the number and then you see like the service fee, the delivery fee and everything that they take out. And the restaurant basically like probably didn't even end up break, like barely broke even. <laughs> From right. what it was. It's just right. Yeah. Not if not if those ingredients are fresh and the place is like, you know, up to fucking snuff. Yeah. Mm. Oh, dude. Order from your favorite spots yeah. directly. Yeah. Hit big. Uh order maybe more than you even need and just like, you know, save for later. Whatever. Freeze it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, if you're ordering delivery, like the make tip it is 20% absolute minimum. Absolute minimum. Yeah. Absolute. Make it fucking make it fucking count. Uh, what food 40%. are you not fucking? With? What food are you not fucking with? <laughs> I mean, that's tough because I eat a lot. I eat my kid. I eat everything. It's um. What don't you like? Not, uh, oh, I don't like. I mean, I I don't like lamb. I won't eat lamb. <laughs> On like moral reasons, or do you, you just don't like it? No, it tastes like shit. What lamb oh, chops and lamb chops are fucking fire. And, and yeah, lamb cheese. chops. Dude, what? I lamb was, is so right. good. So, what about fucking Greek? What about like bro? Mongolian Mongolian hot pot? Yeah. I can't do it, man. Lamb just has a taste that like gags what? me for some reason. I don't know what it is. Also, blue cheese. I do not fuck with blue cheese on any fuck, fuck anything. blue cheese. Whoa. I mean, whoa, for me, whoa, I have you know, blue know. cheese. Whoa. That's crazy, bro. Whoa. You gotta you gotta have blue cheese. Blue cheese. Blue cheese. Is- Stinks. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's All the right. point. So we're, Stinks. We're obviously so we're cooking a lot here, and we're trying to conserve on dishes. So today, I may have used, I may have used a dish that Alex used last night to prep to help prep a meal, and there might have been some blue there. cheese dressing on there that I did not anticipate being there. And I made a beautiful chicken melt sandwich for lunch. It was like lots of mm. chicken skin, lots of cheese. Just perfect. Sure. And the last four bites had a, like, I'm talking like a speck, like a blue cheese on it. Ruined my whole fucking day. Disgusting. Oh, come on, bro. That's a gift. That's I mean, a gift it's, from it's, God. It's a very, it's mouth. a very, still pungent. It's a very, it's a very strong <laughs> never, flavor for sure. But like you, you got to work with it. Yeah, it's bro. Too no, much. It's no. too much. No, my no. tongue doesn't, my tongue only works with things it wants to work with. And blue cheese <laughs> is not one of them. So, for specific time, things, I think. I think it's for, the key is for specific things. Not maybe not that sandwich, but wings. You need ranch and blue cheese in my ranch life. gang reporting in. All right, okay. Ran, ranch, I will fuck with, but on like some also, I, shit. yeah, like I don't need blue cheese on my wings. No, garbage. I feel like blue cheese on wings is just like I can't handle this heat. I need something to just like drown it out. No. No, it's not about drowning it. It's about enhancing the overall experience and mouthfeel. What about like what about like steak? What about like a, a sandwich with like steak, blue cheese, caramelized onions, mm. lettuce? Mm. 
No. Cheese steak. Like a cheese no. steak? No. I no, 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 no. Like some more one French time, Well, I'm, I want the au jus for that. For the French dip, I want the au jus. Mm. Oh, au oh jus. horseradish. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Give me some motherfucking horseradish, my G. That's Horseradish, so don't stop. They keep going. Hell yeah. All right. I think that's it's like half of the podcast, honestly, right there. Yeah, no, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> John, not to cut you off, but, uh, but we want to play one last little game with you in part one, which is last John, next John, LJ, NJ. <laughs> we want to know, LJ, NJ, by the way, Lawrence catching on. LJ, NJ, <laughs> what was the last John you copped at full oh, retail? Not. And then what's the next John you're going to cop? Like what's already in the shopping cart? What you got your eye on? Um, so f- we'll start with last John. All right, so last John. While you think? Fairly recent. Well, I think. Sorry, I just wanted to say, yeah, while you think, I want to cut you off real quick because I want to preface what you're about to say with the fact that John Januzzi is one of the biggest John coppers that we know. When this man fucking shells out, he goes fucking big. Yeah, it might be on sale. Yeah, he might be stacking 100 gift cards. But he's not fucking copping no pedestrian bullshit. He's copping the row. He's copping big outerwear, big shearling, Tom Ford type beat. I just want to say, this guy spends big. He's a whale. <laughs> he's a whale. He's the, he's the Wayne Diamond of the fucking John's world. I do, I do like to spend a lot of money on clothes, um, <laughs> mostly from the perspective. Most, mostly from the perspective of, I like to spend it on stuff that I know I won't have for a very long time, and potentially like heirloom yeah. shit. Smart. Like, if I am gonna buy a shearling, I want like. I envision my like child coming to me and be like, Oh dad, I need a jacket. And me being like, let me pull out this coach for you. And I'm like very old at this point. And he's How just old? like, yeah. wow, this is cool. Yeah. I'm like 94, 94 and he's 14. Um, <laughs> but I think, all right. So last John, I got John's boys a- can, John's boys can swim. Yeah, boy. He's on his fourth wife and his eighth big John. He's like future. He's got yeah. fucking all baby baby mothers. <laughs> one wife, one wife. I mean, whatever. But <laughs> all right. He doesn't get so. It. <laughs> last John would be. I got a Jill Sander uh, sweater, um, like a couple weeks before lockdown, and that was. It. Describe it. Yeah, it was great. It's um, it's. Okay, so look at the sweater I'm wearing now, which is a cream crew neck with a roll neck. It's uh, exactly the same thing. Really? <laughs> he knows. He knows what he likes. He knows what he likes. That's valuable. That's it's a uh, little. It's a. It's like a little heavier than this, and it's not a roll neck. It's um. It's a crew neck, and it it has a slight roll to it, but I wouldn't say it's a full roll neck. Um. And it's like a good mid weight, not too heavy, not too light. Like I'd say, like March, March, early April kind of sweater. Um, I feel like people sleep on Jill Sander. Like Jill Sander is uh, it's Luke and Lucy Meyer, the couple. They're like the co creative directors, and he used to be a, a designer at Supreme. And I feel like they f- yeah. do an overall master cloth. Oh, oh AMC, they, yeah. And and they yeah. and he and she are fucking awesome. And Jill Sander is very expensive, but it is, it is pure fucking chef's kiss. Dude, and it's all about, too, it's all about knowing where to get this shit. It's like, so I got it on, the other thing I've been fucking with a lot lately is credit card points. Because um, at the beginning of this year, we were like, credit oh, card debt. let's travel, let's travel a lot. So we were like, let's figure out how to rack up credit card points. So I got this sweater on Moda, shout out Josh Peskowitz, who you know, obviously, obviously huge mono situation, but Chase. All right. So if you figure out whatever credit card you're using, we got, I got like seven times discover. or nine times the points on discover card. It's every, is that, <laughs> is discover? Every, no, it's not every not diner, want. diner's but, club. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. What's in your but, wallet. All right. All right, Jennifer Garner, this is cool, but <laughs> So we got, I got it and I got a shit ton of credit card points for it because I used like the credit card portal or whatever. Um, so that kind of feels like it was on sale, but yeah, that was last John, uh, beautiful John? sweater. Yeah. What's next? What's in your sights? 
So the last thing I was really looking for was I need a new, I need a new piece of outerwear and it, I need like a either brown or camel overcoat. Um, Cause none of my overcoats fit anymore. Um, my favorite one, I can wear it, but it's super tight in the shoulders and it doesn't quite button. Um, so I was, I did have my eye on that one from the row, the double breasted with the peak lapels. That's bro. That, what, so, how much is that? $7,000? No, no, it's not, it's not, there's a, it's there's not a, that high. There's it's a not 7,000. It's 9,000. Come on, Lawrence. Yeah, it's, there's a, it's so it's, cute. It's so sick, though. It is. And it's like, I mean, obviously, you guys are friends with Liam. And, like, he and I gas each other up on the row all the time. And we're just like, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And then, you know, you get in yourself into a stupid place. So I will probably not end up buying that. because I mean, you sure. Don't let us stop you. Go off, King. I mean, that's the coat. It's, uh, it's huge. It is. It is the coat, but I could get like half of the coat and also then end up with like most of like the life that I need to like pay <laughs> for it to live. Yeah. Um, there was also, there was a, I think it was a double breasted camel coat from, you know, that brand husbands from Par- husbands, Paris or whatever. No. Nah. Yeah, so this was also on Moda, but, and it's sort of, so Moda's actually become like a very like go-to spot for me for a lot of things because you've got Josh there who's obviously making like a pretty informed buy on shit from like his taste perspective. And there's also Kelly Max. McCabe is like the style mm. director there and she makes that shit look in fucking saint. Like she could She's great. she could style a thing and I'd be like, Yeah, I'm there. I'm buying former, it. And, like, former complex also, alum, James Kelly McCabe. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like her perspective on Sal and her whole fucking attitude, I just, I fuck with on a huge level. And they had like, I think at large looking for like a camel overcoat, um, probably double breasted. I think that's the next John. Um, Although in this sort of like current situation we're in, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what copy Johns really means at this time. Like I'm I'm having like a bit of like an existential crisis. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, but you should get the the OG, the Ralph, the Polo Ralph Lauren version of that coat that you want, like the literal Polo coat. That's the one, in my opinion. I bought that coat before, and I returned what? it because it looks like shit on me. Yeah. No, it's too long. Yes, I I will never forget. I this was my shit. It was a it was I had start I just started a new job, and they did a friends and family sale at Ralph's, and everything was thirty percent off, and I was like. I'm going to get this coat. And I think you and I actually talked about it either really? on Twitter or text or whatever. I definitely yeah, told you to do it because I, 30% off 1800 or whatever it costs. That's like the best we're going to get. You know, they sell yeah. out all the time. And, it's the, the class. Yeah. And it was, it's a beautiful, beautiful coat, but it was pretty long on me. Also, even in the right size, like it fit in the shoulders. It looked it looked it didn't look right and it's supposed it to look has, huge that's it's, it's, that's a thing pockets. it's supposed to be and huge yeah 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 i do respect those like, i do respect that my, you were able to pull my, the trigger i do re- go ahead john no i was just saying like on my frame it just didn't look right and like if you're if you're dropping like if you're dropping that amount of money on a coat even on sale like you need to put it on and be like sure. yes so like, that's got to look, look good right off the lot that is a big. Yes. That is a big lesson I want our listeners to come away with. Look, if it's not right and it doesn't work, then just it's not for you, and don't force it. Yeah. And yes, like it sucks that the you know the coat or like the shirt or the sweater doesn't work for you. But like, you gotta find the brands that do fit your body, and not yeah. to belabor the point, but John, you and I we're macro guys, right? Like we understand the bigger picture. Lawrence is too kind of focused on like the moment and how it's gonna look on the gram. But oh we're my thinking, god! We're thinking long term. We're thinking we're thinking heirloom yeah. heirloom status. Nice fucking um, try, dog. With that being yeah. said, I do want to know what what was your like? We're all stuck in quarantine. We're all going fucking nuts here. Uh, we're all getting hammered on while doing pods. Um, what's been like a very strange cop that you made while in quarantine? Because like 
you know, uh, you, you see this on social media where people are like, yo, I blacked and I fucking woke up and like got this like crazy Amazon delivery two weeks from now. Uh, that's, you know, some, some, some kitchenware that I never needed or don't need, but like, what's something that has showed up on your doorstep where you just look on it and you're just like, this is something I would never cop in the actual normal world, only in quarantine. Uh, I mean, I think, I mean, we've bought, we've been buying a lot of things in just like bigger quantities than we ever would. Like I have, you can't see it now, but there's a, there's a giant sack of flour hanging over there, which like normally we would never get. I mean, it's not, it's not like a John level thing. And I've gotten some weird workout shit. Um, just because I'm like, Oh, the home gym life, like I need to get this. to like handle shit like resistance bands and things like that. But I don't know, man. I think we've been, we've kept it. We've, I've tried to keep it as sane as I possibly can in terms of like John's. I mean, I got some, I did buy some like sweats and stuff like that, which is kind of, I guess, out of the norm for me. But like, I don't think there's anything that we've gotten that's like so wild. So Although, you, haven't been, you haven't been like, yo, you know, you will be fun if I like bought this like weird little, I don't know, Heelys, for example. No, I mean, like, no, I mean, like, we also like, I'm, I'm also in a state of mind where I'm just like money is suddenly like, think of it in a different way, because you don't know. You don't know, you just don't know what's going to be in the future. So it's sort of like, we're trying to be as, you know, as frugal as possible, I would say if that makes sense. Smart. I feel like that's a Smart. shitty answer yeah. to this question. Though. That's the, no, that's the adult responsible thing that I feel like as much as James and I preach almost to a fault. Uh, well, we don't preach about cons, cons, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Conspicuous consumption. We're not fans of that, obviously, but I mean, we typically encourage the copying of John's, but right now listeners of this show should probably err on the side of responsibility. I think that as the thought yeah. leader that we are, we should back up John to that point. You know, there is also, I am very much looking at, I am waiting for a lot of things to go on sale at the same time, because it's sort of like, you know, like, Oh, do I, like, do I need this right now? No. But is this opportunity to get X, Y, and right. Z at this price? Do, I need, again do like, I need a fucking, do I need a fucking, you know, M16 assault rifle right now? <laughs> no, right. but they are 15. Uh, if, if these other gun owners start trying to fucking open up my business, then who knows? Yeah. And I'm so susceptible to all this shit because it's like, I, so I've seen an ad for that, that last cop sit Jill Sanders sweater I got. And I actually went to my dresser and was like, I'll just put this on. Cause I just saw the ad for it. So I'm like ready for the taking, man. Like somebody Hell just yeah. show me something I want and I'll and I'll I'll get it. But there are some <laughs> brands You're that fully are not on sale right now and I'm just like, oh, fully. John I mean, the marketer's dream. He he's <laughs> so hard in his umbro fucking four inch inseam shorts. Uh we're gonna wrap up part one on the only podcast that matters, John Danuzzi. Mm. Hope you're ready to lock in for another three fucking hours for part two. Chef. I'm going to need you to hit that motherfucking weedus so we can get into the meat and potatoes. Say okay. what you want about Januzzi, but don't say he is not motivated, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, hit that motherfucking weedus. So-